Hello everybody, welcome to today's live stream. I think we have a pretty cool live stream for you today because we're going to start implementing the core game design idea of the game. That was like the, the thing that when I, when I thought about, I was like, okay, this game is worth making. Okay, I'm not going to tell you yet, we're just going to start programming. Uh, but if you want to come here to the HIO website, you can download uh, the last episode source code. So you can follow along if you want. We have the, the executable and the source code for each episode. Or you can go to the YouTube page and uh, watch all of them. We have four so far. And uh, we started out with a blank file. So we, we typed everything on the, screen, on the stream. You know, no libraries, no cheating. We just, uh, you know, we banged our heads uh, against a couple of walls, a couple of metaphorical walls. But uh, we managed to do a lot of stuff so far. So this is what we have in the game so far. We started out making a breakout clone. So we did like a software rendering, utilities and things like that. So we did uh, this base setup, okay? Then we started implementing some other another cool ideas. So first of all, we started playing around with the shape of the of the blocks, and then we added uh, some power ups like invincibility, like uh, let's see, see, it's invincible. Now we also added. Uh, power downs, right, I think. That's what we decided to call them. Um, okay, so we crashed. Hmm. I think we crashed because we didn't finish the power downs. Yeah, pretty sure. See, because I just hit the power down there and uh, the red square, and I don't think we have all of them. So, uh, we, we hit an assert. Uh, I'm not sure how to go to the disassembly from here. Yeah. So if I just set the next statement, forget about that assert. I think we can. Yeah, I died. Well, okay. So I had a, a few a few ideas based on the other game modes. Let me show you the other ones. This one, which is the one with uh, two balls. And we uh, were kind of thinking about the math uh, of how to make the two balls speed be you know reasonable for the player and i think i came up with a cool idea for that so the basic idea is uh okay that's all we have for now oh we also implemented this other one yeah yeah so the basic idea is let me get my notes here uh yeah we have to implement that the player has three chances i'm going to start typing down those ideas in a for a coder yeah, the game, okay. So we are going to implement the player has three chances because that's pretty hard so far to get in the first try. Uh, and we also should, uh, should yeah, I'm going to just uh, review if we didn't forget any power downs without implementation. It's a certain there, okay, and uh, yeah. So the idea of the two ball levels is that uh, each ball tagged with a flag, for instance, with a flag will. Uh, let's say recalculate its speed based on the position it is the moment it changes its y is uh, d p y to b down. So the basic idea. Okay, so we're going to yeah calculate its speed so that it will always take uh, x seconds to go to the player. Yeah, so the basic idea for that, we're not going to do that today probably, but the idea is uh, if, if the ball like hits the, this wall, let's say this is 10 units, okay? Just for it to be easy to explain. If the ball hits here and we want 
you run to hit the player in one second, its speed is going to be 10 units per second. But if it hits a block like here, its speed should be 5 units per second. This way, we can start with a ball like going up and a ball going down from the middle, and they will always hit the player in the, the same time. Like we're going to, you know, we're going to keep switching. Hey Marcus, nice to see you here. Uh, today we're going to implement that cool idea that we discussed, that I kind of, uh, I kind of typed down and you threw a, a more ideas. It's about the block movement. And this system is going to allow us to make the, the unique things in the game. You know, the, the cool game design core that I, that I had in mind uh, to make this game. So, what I'm going to do quickly, I'm just going to uh, create a new level, right? It's going to be this level. <laughs> and I'm going to see how cool will that be. First of all, all I'm going to do, let's see, level zero. All I'm going to do is to create um, to create a couple of, uh, actually just one. I'm going to create one block block. Okay. And uh, yeah, maybe no spacing. And maybe I can do like a 10 by 5. And I don't even remember all of those parameters. We added a lot of stuff last time. We added a lot of mechanics. Uh, okay. Rivalry, 0. Y offset. Maybe I can do like a little bit of Y offset. X offset, spacing. I'm gonna add a little bit of spacing, just a little bit. And also, we wanna change the size, and we also have to pass that as a parameter. Okay? Um, yeah, that's kinda it, but I wanna make it like really smaller. So, the half size, let's see. See, this is hard coded. The X uh, half size, let's pass this parameter. Block half size okay and uh, everyone here's four right before the rivalry okay 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 and this one is gonna be two let's see Um, not sure I liked that. I'll try like two, maybe like eight by three. Maybe I should, should make them even smaller. How big is the power up, just for reference? The power block. It's, uh, well, power block. Size it's two by two. Yeah, so I guess it's gonna be two by two. I think that's the smallest we can go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is kind of it's kind of okay. I think I'm gonna make like eight by two. Okay. Now we wanna start moving this guy, right? Yes. Okay. Let's just let's just uh, like minus thirty. Okay. Going to start moving him. So, in order to do that, all we have to do, I think we're gonna add two functions. We're going to add one right here uh, in each block. I'm going to do like simulate block for level. And I'm going to pass the block and the current level. And I'm also going to do the simulate level okay so simulate level and that takes the current level then we do simulate block for level Okay, 
Now, uh, up here, we had the idea of the game mode state, right? But we kind of deleted that. We're going to add something back in the same, uh, in the same idea, which is the game, uh, let's say level state. We're going to make that a union, but not for now. What I'm going to do now, oh, well, yeah, I am going to do that. I'm going to do like level com state. This is going to be union, and it's going to be a uh, level com state. Pong. Okay, this one I'm going to save like the enemy DP, um, which is a V2, and then we're going to save the enemy. Okay, uh, that's it for now. And on the simulate level, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add the enemy p dot x. That's at ten. You know, this is just. Or well, I should also pass like the dt here. This is, you know, it's just for for us to get started. And the simulate block for level, we're going to do block. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to do block p, not sure, because the idea is this block p now is relative to the enemy p, but if we set that, hmm, yeah, well, let's not do anything here for now. Enemy p, it's going to be game, uh, it's going to be level state, dot pong, dot enemy p, and that is in case uh, our level is 05 pong. Okay, break. Okay. Level. Current level. Let's call it that. Mm. Yeah. And we should also, you know, we just added the level struct. We should also make that. And in the start game, I'm also going to zero that. Zero short level state. Okay. Simulate level is going to pass the DT. Okay. Actually, we shouldn't see anything, right? Because we're not offsetting, offsetting the block. Now, what I am going to do is block P. Maybe I should just, I, I, uh, I'm not sure. I should return like a V2. Like uh, the new block P. Not sure this is the best idea though. So the result is going to be the block P plus equals the level state. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here. Plus level state pong dot enemy P dot X. Uh, actually, I'm going to do a add v2. Okay. So all I want to see now is the blocks moving uh, as a whole. Okay. And I'm going to return result. Result equals block. see what we have. Oh yeah, we also have to change that to simulate block for level. We're going to do block p equals this guy. Okay. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> Let's just do it like really slow. Uh, is that correct? Enemy Oh, yeah, enemy P plus equals 3. 
Well, this should be like three units per second. It doesn't look like three units per second to me. Well, let's just put a breakpoint there just to see. Okay, nice colors. Yeah, at the end of the last stream, we added a uh, quick colors just to create some, some visual variety. And uh, the idea is to make a whole pass in the game feel. And colors are really important. And that already changed a lot of the feel, just, just doing some more interesting colors. And that was really random. If you watch that stream, <laughs> that was really... We didn't think about that a lot. I almost did, but I didn't. Okay, so um, we're here on on this guy. Simulate block per level, and we should also put a break point here. Okay, so the P zero, the DT is very small. So yeah. Okay, and then when when we should should add the block P. To the enemy P. Yeah, I'm not sure why that was so fast. We just we're also going to write no proper movement code, but for now, let's just you know check out. Yeah, okay, this is a little bit better. Oh, because they're accelerating. Okay, <laughs> this is gonna be cool. <laughs> okay. What we're going to do, uh, it's going to be like a really stupid AI for now. I, in case you guys haven't, oh, I, I'm not going to say, I'm going to let you guys see. Uh, well, if the ball 0.p.x, right, if it's greater means if it's to the right of the enemy p.x, we are going to uh, put a DDT here. DDP, which is the acceleration. Let's do it like, I don't know, 100. Uh, else, we're going to do the DDP dot Y. Yeah, we should probably do it else if, just in case we are like, at the exact position, ddp.x uh, equals minus n. Okay, and now we're going to add the proper equations, which is the the dp is going to be plus equals the ddp, right? So I have to have to write that full extent. So going to be uh, add the enemy dp. I think I'm gonna add like a pointer to the level palm statement. Just so we don't have to keep you no know, typing that all the time. Um, okay. Yeah, way better. Okay. Okay. We're going to add the pong enemy dp with the ddp times, do we have multiply? Yeah, times uh, the dt. Okay, that's the basic uh, equation for the, for the velocity. And for the position, we're going to be the same thing here, right? It's going to be going to add the position to the velocity times the dt, right? And this is just like the basic equations of motion. So we can have a, we can, you know, take the benefits of having, having an actual acceleration. So we can have friction and we can see if it continues to move, not, not just a weird, you know, setting the velocity hard coldly. Okay, and we're also going to add The, the DDP, right, times uh, the DT squared, yeah, ball, balls, the D 
DP is not a member of pawn. Pawn enemy. DT. Conversion from V2 to F32. Yeah. Okay, we don't have a square function. Let's add that here. Okay. Now. Hmm. Let's see what we have so far. Okay, we have nothing. Or maybe it's like, oh, okay, we have something. <laughs> I suppose that's wrong, right? If it's to the left of me, I'm going to do the other thing. And it's probably way too strong as well. Okay. At least it's move, it moves, right? Okay, so let's see. Okay, so this side is this side he does nothing, and now he gets away. Hmm. If the ball p dot x is greater than the enemy p dot x, okay, we're gonna have to do that slowly. Oh, okay. So. That's one problem, and I suppose that was correct the first time around. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Hmm. Um, just to make sure. I'm going to set these guys to the level state on enemy P. So we're going to have like just one block to show where everybody, everyone is at. So let's see. Yeah, so that, that thing was wrong. See, this is what we expected. So now it's going to try to change the direction really slowly. Okay, so this can be stronger and that was wrong. That's okay, yeah, that's wrong because we are adding every frame. So that's gonna be a little tough. Maybe we should have like a flag for relative position. Hmm. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. Not sure if this is a good idea though, but we have the blocks, right? Let's go to the block struct. Um, yeah, we have the block. We should, I think I'm gonna add here a pointer to an origin. Right, and every time I play around the block P, I'm actually going to, you know, offset by the logic. Hmm, not sure this is a good idea. Or maybe I should just add like a relative P. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm going to add a V2 relative P. And AP. Okay. Uh, when we spawn the blocks, so block block. This is a really bad name, by the way. When we do that, I'm going to set the ball relative P. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's just do that. Do this thing again, just so we know every time we, we use the block P. So this one should be the block P. Um, yeah. This one, yeah. This one should be, I think pretty much all of them should be the block P, except when we spawn them. Like, yeah, do collision. 
simulate block for level. Yeah, this one we're going to have to change. Yeah. This, yeah, this is the spawn. We're also going to make it relative. Yeah. And yeah, this I'm going to remove entirely. So, okay, so let's go back. Let's do the simulate level, uh, block for level. No more results. Now I'm going to change directly the block D here. So we're going to have a default case, which will be that the block P equals the block relative P. But in this case, let's, let's do one more time. The block P is going to be the relative P plus this guy. I think that's going to work. And then we can actually, uh, yeah, it's going to work. Plus, I'll have to do the add V2. Okay. If you guys have any questions, be sure to drop them in the chat and I'll try to answer them. Let's see. Okay, so it's trying to go right. Oh, it's trying to change the direction. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm going to add some friction <laughs> just because, you know, once it picks up speed, it's hard to go the other way. In that case, I think it's going to be, oh, it's going to be sweet, man. Okay, so we have the DP and I'm going to add a friction, friction, which for now is just, just going to be the, the DP like times a constant, let's say 10, maybe 10 is too much. And then I can actually just set the DDP to be the friction. We start and here I'll do the DDP uh, dot x plus equals this, yeah, okay. Let's see, now, now I think he's going to have a hard time to move at all in this case, yeah. But maybe he can change speed quicker. Yeah, he did. Okay, now all I have to do is to increase this guy. Oh, I'm sorry, not that guy, this guy. Maybe a little bit of this guy as well. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, still too much friction, I suppose. Okay, it's starting to be better. Yeah, see that change of, of uh, yeah, that was that was pretty sweet. Uh, I think I'm gonna add like a lot here. Let's just see how it looks, and we can we can play around with that pretty much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now it's going to be a little bit hard, or maybe impossible, really. <laughs> oh, not impossible. Okay, just inconvenient. And you also have to, to block this position. <laughs> this is pretty funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he actually thinks he's trying to... He actually thinks he's hitting the ball. Yeah. Okay. Well, poor him. <laughs> okay, so that is one of the one of the main ideas I wanted to play around with. You know, to make each game, each level, like a throwback to an actual game, but all of them are going to play as if it were breakout. See, so this is Pong. Then we can do like Space Invaders, we can do Tetris, we can do all sorts of stuff. You could add the Bob uh, position prediction to the blocks so they can avoid it. Yeah, certainly, we can do like a, 
Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure he wants to avoid the ball. If we wanted to avoid the ball, we could just like change this thing here. Yeah, I don't know if he wants to avoid or actually change, or maybe both. Yeah, so... <laughs> oh, we should also cap him, right? <laughs> so, uh... Okay. Uh, let's do this is the desired P. If the desired P dot X is greater than, I don't know, do we have the arena half size? Yeah. If it's greater than the arena half size, minus, well, we don't have like a whole block size. Let's just hard code 10 for now. If it's greater than 10, uh, we're going to set it to this. And maybe you're going to do like the desired DP. And then we can do like the desired DP. Uh, equals multiply the desired dp by minus 0.5 so it can do a little bit of energy. So it's going to, going to try to go as far as it can. And uh, yeah, dot x. And, but we also have to change here to the, and this one's correct. This one's correct, but this one should be the desired dp. Now let's see, he's going to try to get away. Yeah, oh, that was it. Hmm. That was like really bad. <laughs> and let's, let's, let's see the, the real thing here. Oh, uh, when we, when we spawn the blocks, we have eight blocks, each one is two in half size plus a. Yeah, I'm going to save like pong. Uh, let's do like level state.pong equals, uh, let's do eight times, well, yeah, eight times two and a half plus this guy, which is the. Yeah, the spacing. Dot pong dot, let's say, uh, enemy half size x. Okay. Then we add a enemy half size x. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Let's do it like this. Okay, now, now we can use here the enemy half size x. Pong enemy half size x. Yeah. Then we're going to do the other collision. If it's less, then minus this guy plus this guy going to be minus this guy. Uh, this is wrong. It's going to be the arena. It's going to be this whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Now. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's a little bit better. It's not a hundred percent. But we can fix that later. Because the goal is kind of to get to get the ball like behind him, so we can get like a little bit slower movement here. Maybe a little bit of slower friction. Because we want to get the ball behind him, you know, that's part of the fun, right? We want that to be a little bit tricky. Hmm. 
Yeah, this is not hard, like, at all. So maybe it's gonna get boring quickly. You know, once you realize the joke. Maybe you should just add the, the, the ball to be really fast. Okay, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I think the ball is gonna be really fast. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go through all the blocks. Do we have, like, here a block? Yeah, we have the, the speed multiplier here. Let's do, like, a base speed multiplier. See, that's the one thing that I really wish that we're in C, that, that exists in C++, is default parameters. Because this sort of function, you know, it's not fun to pass like a thousand parameters. Yeah, like this. I don't even, re I just added the parameter, I don't even remember what order I added that. Let's see. It's the last one before the rivalry. So the base one's going to be one. Yeah, okay. Okay. But this one, let's do two. Let's make it faster. So when you hit the ball, it's gonna be like really fast. Yeah, okay, now it's way better. Okay. See? Yeah, okay, yeah, that was cool, yeah, okay. Oh, this may be a little too hard, let's see. Oh, maybe not. Hmm, that was nice. And what we can do, just for the fun of it, we could add um, let's do just like a block. We could add a power downs for everyone here. Mm, let's do block. Uh, don't we have like a... Yeah, like this. So, uh, in the block, block guy here. We should do block, power, uh, power block. Yeah, power block. It's going to be equal to power, uh, Let's do, yeah, we only have like insta-kill. I mean, we have strong blocks, but yeah. Okay. Now, now it's getting interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, see? Yeah, I kind of liked that a lot. So, let's start doing more of those. Uh, we, should, we should really uh, add block movement. Let's do like Space Invaders, Tetris, and then we do these guys. Player has three chances. Yeah, we did finish. I'm just gonna call like finish power downs. Two balls, I'm gonna try that. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And yeah, that's about it. And then we fix the bugs. Debug weird ball behavior. Improve add life. 
Okay, so let's do the Space Invaders one. Here, when we create the level, you know what? I'm just going to prevent the crash. Uh, this crash right here. Yeah. Just because. I know, kind of sucks. We'll have we'll have it do nothing. It's better than crash. Okay, so case L zero six invaders. You know what? I think I'm gonna add a invader guy just for the fun of it. <laughs> like like this guy. So I'm gonna add it here in the side just so I can uh, use it as reference. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then we do like block block. I'll do like um, create invader. And then you can pass like the P. So I think I'm gonna do like a real stupid thing for now. <laughs> Just as, so it's a little bit easier. Um, so we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I don't entirely remember how I do this. I can just. Mm. Maybe it's just like this. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, I don't really remember how much I said. Uh, it's like. Can I do it like this? No, just one. Okay. Yes, it's not going to line up perfectly. Yeah, okay, that would be enough. So, uh, it's like four guys here. And then we add one like this, and then we add the, the full row like this, and then we add like one like this, and this one's the whole line. Yeah, okay, <laughs> this is going to be fun, <laughs> and then um, I start out here, like two, and then there's the I, then there's like three, and there's the I, and then there's two, Then I hope I do a whole one like this, <laughs> it's kind of funny, see, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I do the antennas. Which starts out where the I ends. And it's something like, something like this. 
Yeah, okay. See, now that's a art skill. Yeah, I can remove this guy. That was just for reference. I guess I'll comment. Okay, now we have our invader guy. Now let's spawn some blocks. <laughs> Actually, how how's it gonna be? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's just see the debugger because I think I may I may want to do a array really. Yeah, I may actually do an array of guys. Um, let me just stop that out and create it later. Oh, this is a pretty cool trick. Uh, control B uh, pops up the new function breakpoint dialog, so I can just like Control B, type the name of the function, and then it stops. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to do an array. So it's going to be an array of these guys. Now I could add the, the comma. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it looks good. So, <laughs> for each guy in the array, For each character, like you see, like Vader I, while at if at is not equal to space, like add guy. Yeah. I'm gonna make the P the starting P. Just make it easier for us. Then we can do it like the center calculation. It shouldn't be shouldn't be that hard though. Yeah, I'll just call it P. And then uh, well else if we don't we, if we shouldn't add a block, I'm still going to add the the block size here. So the block size may be two. So let's do two. Um, block size. Okay. Let's add a guy. Let's do how how do we add guys here? We do it like this. We should make this a function maybe. Yeah. Like we, we have like a new Do we have like a power up? Get get next available ball. Let's do like a uh, mm, block get next available block. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, okay. It's easy enough. Now block's gonna be get next available block. And we should also do that. Let's see the block block. Here and then now that we're doing the invaders, yeah, invader and guy. So we're gonna get the next available block, and then I should also do like this basic operation, like uh, not really. Okay, so set the life to one. Set the block half size to block size, block size. Um, and set the relative P. I think we're gonna need a lot of blocks for, for these guys. So the relative P is 
going to be the P. And then we add this guy, so yeah, and here we add the Y. Okay. Let's see if we need anything else. Block color. Let's do full white for now. And the ball speed multiplier. We can play around with that as well. Let's do like one plus I. Um. One plus I. Let's see. One, two, three. Yeah, we can do the same thing. Divided by array count. In figures. Okay. Make color from gray. And we're going to pass black. Invaders. Invader. Okay. Let's see what we have. Okay. Oh, pfft. yeah, we have to do this as well. Okay. I'll think after that breakpoint. Let's see. Yeah, and we still crashed. So let's do this slowly. At this guy looks good. Oh, we should also have to reset the X position. Um, yeah. The at, okay. Now the at is zero, so we create a block. Okay. And then we're going to put a brick in here. Okay, now the at. Oh, yeah, I forgot the uh, to dereference that pointer. Okay, so that's the thing. And we also have to do the uh, original x. It's going to be p.x. Then when we go to the new line, we set the original x back. So everyone starts at the same x. Okay, let's see. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> that was not particularly pretty, but I think it's because of the position that we added. This is the half size. So we have to offset by the half size times 2. Oh, not 5, 2. Okay, now see, this is where the fun begins, I should say. And we start to say, oh, okay, it's upside down. Oh, this is gonna be, it's gonna be really cool. <laughs> it's upside down, and it's also wrong something. Oh, let me, let me print screen this guy. And uh, how do I rotate? Okay, so I think we have one too many guys. Um, yeah, this is wrong. Um, one too many in the right side of the eye, like this. Correct, yeah. Um, actually, I'm not, um, let me just put here in the side so I can uh, see. Okay, so the eye is always oh, okay, this line here. Now this line, who am I? I know what to tell you, dude. 
<laughs> My name is Dan, and I like to make games. I uh, have released this pretty cool game, I think, uh, for the PS4 and the PC back in 2017. It's called Iliosis Hunt. That was pretty cool. And uh, the story is, I finished the game, and then I was like, I really don't know how to program, for real. So I spent like a, a year or so learning actual programming. And uh, this stream is a kind of way to have fun, because I'm doing games for a hobby now, instead of as a, as a work. So I, I like to have fun making games, so this stream is a way to have fun. And uh, yeah. Microsoft welcomes you. <laughs> okay, yeah, we are doing this for Windows, Microsoft. No, I don't like it though, so... <laughs> yeah, you can check out my YouTube channel if you want to see uh, the other videos in the series. We started this game from scratch. And uh, yeah, uh, from nothing really. And you can download the source code on the itch.io page. And now we're doing the cool gameplay stuff. But for some reason, the drawing didn't turn out to be correct the first time around. I think like this should be right and this and this and this. Yes, that's it. Okay, uh, if anyone has any other question I can certainly answer it. Okay, cool. Now, let's make him not upside down. Isn't that cool? Oh, you already collided with that. Yeah, okay, that's gonna be really cool, dude, but it's like, it's huge. It's like really big, really big. You can probably do like 10 times more. You didn't make a loan. No, I did not make a loan. Uh, yeah, I started out making the game alone. If you go to my YouTube channel, you can see how far I went alone, which was, was pretty funny the way it looked like. Um, I did like this thing all by myself, which was like a, the basic idea for the game. So you are this alien guy, and then you yeah you can jump around, you have weapons. So it's the, the idea is that it's a shooter and platformer. I used the Unreal Engine uh, right by the time it was uh, releasing for the public, the 4.0 version. So yeah, you can pick up your weapon, you can shoot guns, and then I did like this enemy guy. And then at this point, I realized that it was a lot of work. It was a pretty big game. You know, I, I spent three and a half years developing that game. Uh, so yeah, it was a lot of work. So at this point, I decided to focus on the alpha version. Let's call it that. So it's uh, I start, stopped doing the art for the most part. I did this monster and things like that. But I focused on the gameplay. So yeah, I did that all by myself. And at this point, I said, okay, let's try to get more people on board. And since... I was pretty much a student back then. I was like, okay, let's look for other students that are really interested in making this game, uh, that are not like seasoned professionals or anything, but uh, they know their stuff. So uh, the whole team worked in the game for two years. So I spent like one year before and half a year after on my own. Well, for some reason you just glitched. Uh, but in the middle, yeah, I had help. It was like 10 people working on the project at, at one point. I don't know why the YouTube video kind of glitched out. I'm going to throw the link in the chat so you guys can check out the Steam page. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, it just came out of sale, but it's pretty cheap. Uh, I don't know, I think it's like $10. Yeah, you can also buy it on the PSN. So yeah, I did got help. That was pretty cool. But after the game release, I was like, okay, I need to take a step back. Yeah, thanks. You said that's cool. Happy flower, thanks. Uh, so I took a step back and I was like, okay, I have to really focus on becoming a better programmer. Because by the end of development, man, oh, that was like really craziness going on. Because I had to port for the PS4 version, but I didn't actually know C++ that well. Then I had to integrate with FMOD, the middleware for audio that we use. Then the Unreal Engine was all crazy and stuff. Then I had to upgrade the versions really quickly because the SDK would expire. And we had so much problems that I couldn't actually know how to fix. So it was really weird. It was like, okay, I'm going to try to hack this stuff and ask people online. And uh, this happens when you use like a lot of tools and you don't actually understand them, which I didn't. 
at that time. Uh, the beginner uh, part, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, with tutorials and things like that. But when you go to the more advanced stuff, like shipping a game to the PS4, there's like a, a really shortage of tutorials. So uh, that's what I found. So that was really hard. So I decided to take a step back and focus on programming. And I fell in love with low-level programming. So for this live stream, I decided to do a game with no, uh, no libraries. How many downloads did the game get? Well, commercially, it was kind of a failure. So you can see that we have a 30, 38 reviews. I don't remember off the top of my head how much how many uh, downloads we had, but uh, it was kind of a less than 10,000, definitely, maybe 5,000. How much money did I make? Not much. <laughs> the game didn't pay itself, to be honest, because we traveled. I live in Brazil, and we traveled around Brazil's uh, largest events, like BGS, which is the Brazil uh, BGS like the event games. The Brazilian games, uh, Brazil game show. That's a pretty big one. And uh, we went to Sao Paulo like five times. Sao Paulo is like the big city in Brazil where everything happens. And at this point, where we uh, started going through these events, we spent a lot of money. Because for, for the people working on the project, you know, most of them were students and we, we kind of uh, did a little bit of free, free, freelancing work. So we spent a little bit of money with that. But the events are really expensive. So we didn't actually pay the game back. That's why we had to close the company. The company closed before I could release the game. Was it worth it then? Absolutely. Dude, it, it was awesome to release a game to the PS4. Uh, you know, I learned a lot. I used to say that uh, if I were to sit down and talk to the person that uh, the person I was when I started the game, when I finished the game, I like would disagree like 100% because I changed so much my views on everything. Not only game programming, but also game design and team management, production, running a company, making money, you know, talking to people, you know. So it was absolutely worth it. it. Was Oh, it was great. I absolutely loved it. And doing a project this size, which was three and a half years, really taught me a lot about production and scheduling and uh, how, can I, how, can I, how can I get things done, basically. And that's really, really important. So when we're doing like small size games like we're doing now, so if you go to my HIO page, ever since I published that game, I also did a VR game with this company. But ever since, uh, ever since I released that game, I worked mostly on small game jams kind of games. How big a team? We were, I think, 10 max at that point. Let me see, there was three audio people. There was like, um, yeah, about 10 or 11, I think 10. Yeah, so people you know from all over you know, the world, but mostly, mostly local people here, students from Brazil. So, uh, yeah, so, so the money did, uh, wasn't worth it in terms of like financial success, but in terms of releasing a game, a complex game, you know, learning a lot about production, about programming, about game design, about, you know, getting things done, about business, about financing. You know, with Pitch, we talked to a lot of, you know, publishers, we met a lot of people, we got, we got to be known in Brazil a little bit. That was pretty cool. So, yeah, oh man, absolutely worth it. But now I think the point is, in my life, let's say, is to really focus on becoming a better programmer and designer. So we, when I tackle projects this size again, uh, I, can do, I can be more confident. Because, you know, there are a lot of flaws in this game. It was my, big fir my first big commercial game, after all. I worked on games for advertisements before I worked on this game. And that was a whole different, you know, whole different game, you know, so to speak. Because... Uh, they were really small games, and we didn't really care about the player, only about the, the client that paid for the game. And uh, so, yeah, I, I really left there with a sour taste in my mouth, and I was like, okay, I want to I wanna make games for entertainment. I want to, you know, I'm going to make cool games that I think I, I would love to play, and people would like to play. So that was the idea behind this game. So I spent like three and a half years doing that. That was really cool. Uh, I dream about making my own game. Dude, making games are awesome. You know, the, the risk of that, that I, I fell into, actually, is that now I like so much making games that I play, you know, a lot fewer games than I used to, to do. But I think that's a, a nice progression, right? Because I fell in love with making games. It's really cool, man. Uh, when, when I found out about Unreal, when it released Unreal Engine 4, when it left the beta and stuff, I really liked the way it uh, worked in terms of... Uh, 
how easy it was to get something cool on the screen. So I started, you know, I was an artist before I started programming. So I then started, you know, just creating interesting things in Unreal. That was the basic idea. And then uh, that thing started to make it to, to become more complex. So you can see the, like the very first prototype of the game. Like I modeled and animated this guy and then I programmed him moving around and then jumping, things like that. Then I did the shooting system. Um alô aqui do Rio de Janeiro. I don't like video games, but I like C programming. Your project looks co cool. Thanks. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, the thing about, about video games, a lot of people I know don't like video games per se, but like making video games. That's a pretty interesting dis distinction. I like them both, but I can definitely see the difference. So maybe you like, you like make, making video games, dude. I don't know. <laughs> you can definitely try. So yeah, using an engine is a nice way to start. But at this point, I really like doing games from scratch. And if you if you watch out if you watch from the very first episode in my YouTube channel, you can see we started out with nothing. So if you like programming, do do from Rio de Janeiro, <laughs> Rio de Janeiro, you can definitely see uh, the progress of doing the C game, and maybe you can you know try things on your own. So let's go back. Unless you guys have any more questions. Drop any questions if you have them, since we're doing like this little off-topic chat for a while. It's good to have more ideas about the game we're doing. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go back to our Invader guy. So this is turning out really cool. Uh, but what I actually want to do is to make him uh, smaller, like a lot smaller, right? Shouldn't be, shouldn't be hard. I think we kind of baked that as a constant here. So maybe if I just do it like this, it'll be 10 times smaller, maybe? Wow, how cool is that, man? <laughs> and our render really handled that, you know? It's not 100% perfect because we don't have like sub accurate pixel rendering. But <laughs> that was fun. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that was crazy. Oh, and you also have to change the Y thing. Because the way we structured this code is that uh the bigger the, the bigger the row he is, the faster the speed multiplier, but actually we want the other way around. Because we want to start pretty slowly, so we're going to do like the max minus this guy times this guy, okay. Uh, I love playing League of Legends, however, many of my champions don't fall in my taste, so I'd love to ch change them. Make my own game where there's only one thing I'm satisfied with, however, it's way more difficult said than done. Yeah, it's difficult, it's more difficult said than done, but it's not that hard to get started. That's the cool thing about making games now. Hello, Timmy! Glad to see you, man. Uh, the thing about, about getting started at Happy Flower is that, uh, I'm 0 0.4 done with the same, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know, maybe you shouldn't start, you should start like with a simpler game, but, uh, and you know, the, the key thing about making games is not giving up. I mean, three and a half years to build, to build Iliosis, I mean, I almost gave up a couple of times because it's really, it's really tough, man. I mean, you get a little bit sad in the beginning, uh, in the, uh, the middle, you're like, oh, there's no wind in sight. And then you're in the end and like, oh, I think this suck. Oh, I don't want to finish it. You know, oh, everything went wrong. And I, oh, I wanted to be, a, to be a better game. So the key is not to give up, to be really, really, uh, you know, perseverant. Perseverance, is that, a, is that a word? Basically not to give up, like, at all. And uh, starting small makes it easier not to give up. This video is you're uploading to YouTube. I checked the playlist you named to making a game from scratch. Disculpa pelo inglês, sorry for the English. Yeah, it's okay, your English was nice, man. Uh, yes, we, we are uploading it to YouTube. We have this making a game in C from scratch. I'm going to throw the link in the, the, script, uh, in the, in the chat here. Uh, yeah, you can check out all the videos. Every, uh, we, we're, we're live streaming the whole thing. So we started out the blank file. We did like a hello program, hello world program. And then we started doing the, the actual game. You know, we started out playing a window, getting graphics done, gameplay. Now we're doing some like some crazy stuff because the idea for the game was to start out with a basic, you know, uh, breakout clone, which we did 
the couple less streams, which is this guy, just a breakout clone, right? Not too much about it. But then it started adding cool uh, mechanics, like a lot of people on chat, like Marcus had a lot of cool ideas about mechanics he wanted to add. So we did like this wall pattern, and then we added power-ups, like let's see, this power-up is invincibility. And we had like another power-up. Yeah, this one's a pretty cool, it's a comet that kind of a drives through. And these are like power downs. So yeah, ugh, yeah, I lost. Uh, How do you finance getting 10 people to work? Well, in Brazil, there's this thing called, it's kind of an internship, but it's not really internship. It's kind of a junior position. And that's pretty, pretty cheap. And most of them were students. So we had to, you know, it was pretty, pretty cheap. And my dad also helped me to pay uh, what we had to pay for these guys. So yeah, that's how we finance. We, we live in a, in a country that, uh, People don't actually get a lot of money for working, which is sad, but good if you're trying to get started. And uh, we also looked for students, so they didn't charge like much at all, at all, really, because they wanted to learn. Just like I learned a lot, everybody learned a lot. So yeah, that was how, basically how we financed. And, and it was like two years of a company, so it's not like we had to like get a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars right off the bat, you know. In two years, you can get a lot of. Uh, you can start little by little. And by the end, we had to close the company because the money ran out basically, right? So, so I had to go back here, my uh, the apartment, my parents live, and uh, to finish the game on my own. That was part of the process, but that was cool. It kind of, a, it was a fitting like hero's journey, right? I started out on my own, on my uh, bedroom, right? And then I uh, finished on my own in my bedroom. That was pretty cool. Uh, but that was a lot sad because uh, I really love the team. Yeah, we can. We should like do like a live stream where everybody comes together and uh, play the game, things like that. That'd be cool. So yeah, we started playing around with the game mechanics. This one's pretty cool, but we have to we have to play around with that a lot. So we have two balls, and you can only destroy the blocks that are in the same color. But it's not really playable now. This is a bit weird. And uh, yeah, this was a, a variation of that one. Yeah. So we have to we have to play around with that a lot. But this one are the cool ones that we're implementing. So it's breakout, but with old games. <laughs> so we have like a pong level, which is this one. That's really cool. And then, uh, yeah, I may die actually. Oh uh, yeah. And then we're doing the Space Invader ones. But why spend time on this pixel game? Because we're doing it from scratch, man. Uh, since I'm doing like, games for hobby now, and I don't have like, money to make another game this size and uh and i do have uh, like a another work and things like that i can't take t uh, i can't tackle a, a three and a half uh pixel uh three and a half pixel i read pixel and said a three and a half year project right i can't do that right now so i want to do a simpler game that i can actually finish so that's a cool tip for you that wants to start making games i uh, start with with small pixel games man like yeah there are a million others Pretty much like this one but uh there are not a million ones that you created see that's a distinction and team is right it's fun uh the point of this live stream just to have fun and to learn so we are learning a lot if you if you see the progress you know we had a lot of problems and we we're coming up with solutions for that uh, for them and uh it's great to make games dude uh not only big games but also small games and uh, this game we're actually going to finish and post on each io and things like that uh, you know, some was also from scratch in a real engine. Yeah, it was from a real engine, but uh, since you use like an, an engine, it's not actually from scratch because the engine does like a lot of the a lot of the let's say boilerplate work, like rendering work, collision work, animation work, things like that, uh, asset management, streaming, porting to the platform, things like that. So yeah, by using an engine, it's not really from scratch, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had to create all the assets and all the mechanics and program the gameplay. So the gameplay was from scratch, if that's your question, but uh, the game as a whole is not. The engine really helps in the beginning, and it's really a pain in the ass if you don't understand that by the end. Do you think pixel games can still be nice? I'm learning OpenGL and I really want to make a pixel game. Yeah, dude, I really like this kind of game. Uh, not only to learn, but also to play, because you can really get interesting mechanics out of them. Because when you get like a complex game, like... 
Helios Hunt's not, it's not really a complex game, but it's a more evolved game in terms of graphics and stuff. A lot of it get in the way of making the game design interesting. So by making small pixely, you know, pixel art games, you can really focus on, first of all, understanding the whole program, which is a good point. And the other point is to, uh, is to play around with the mechanics to make them interesting. So in, in this scenario where everything's more controlled, See, we just, for, for this guy, we just implemented the movement equation by hand, and we could really understand the, the, the variables in place. So we added friction, we added acceleration, things like that. Uh, so by doing that, when you're doing a, a bigger game, like Iliosa's Hunt, for instance, you have a lot more uh, understanding, a greater understanding of everything in the game. So it definitely helps making these kind of games, and uh, they're, they can be really fun. Yeah. So... 0 0.2 was way too small. Let's try 0 0.5. Um, yeah, that's more like it. Maybe it's still a little bit too small. Yeah, once there's like one or two left, it's going to be really hard. Let's do like 0.8. Why not use the tools you have? Right now, you don't use your hammer. You use your hand to punch the needle down the wood. Uh, yeah, the thing about using tools is that uh, I use them for a long time. And if you don't really understand them, you have a really hard time, especially by the end of the development process when you're trying to ship the game. When you're just prototyping, yeah, whatever, dude. We use whatever tools you want. But if you want to do like a serious game, which I do want to do a serious game, you know, way bigger than Eliosis, but I'm just not going to do them now, right? Uh, if you are doing this kind of game, you really need to learn your tools. That's essential. Like, and I didn't at the time. So I spent a lot of time trying to, to hack things together you know, searching for things that I didn't actually understand. So taking the time that I'm doing these uh, months to really understand what a game is made up of, so to speak, when I go ahead and use tools or build my own tools for that, the understanding is going to be so much bigger, the understanding, that uh, it's going to be easier to ship, it's going to be more robust when, they have, when I uh, come up with random bugs, I will be able to fix them. So there's a lot of value of understanding the whole process, even though there are tools available to make you get started quicker. But the thing I found out with Yosef's Hunt, that uh, by the end of the process, you know, if you don't understand the tools, man, you're going to have a huge hard time. And, and they don't sell you that when they tell you about the game engines. They only tell you about the beginning. The beginning is great. You start quickly, you have a lot of fun. That's great. But by the end, uh, I'm going to open the window here just because it's really hot. Yeah, Brazil, even in winter, <laughs> And even when there's like a, everyone says it's really cold, it's really hot. I like the, I like it though, yeah. Okay, let's see if 0.8 is enough. Yeah, this one looks a little bit nicer. So let's start adding movement to these guys. I'm going to add uh, a whole bunch of them, like Invader, Create Invader, yeah. Okay, no, I think I'm gonna automate that because Okay, I'm a programmer, am I not? Okay, so let's add like uh, five invaders. Like this. And then there's, there's that like... Uh... Okay, fair enough. But you can re read Unreal Engine's uh, presets. Why not use them like the preset says? When A goes to B, you gain A's power. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I already made a game using these presets. And uh, it's not nice to, to understand what that preset does. So when you actually go to use them, you have a, like a huge hard time. But that's not, that's not I think, the beginning of the process. I think for Yosef Hunt was great. I, I would not have made Yosef Hunt if I hadn't used Unreal. That's for sure. Especially at that time. And, and now I can't even do that. And it, it would take like a lot, a lot longer, but uh, I think it's a process. You know, it's a process of uh, of learning. So yeah, I learned to use tools. Now I'm going to learn how to make tools. So yeah, that that was really bad. Let's do like times ten. Okay. Okay, that didn't work. Let's do times 30. I think that's right, the call, I think. But, uh, 
actually, mm. so it's going to be zero, and then uh, while after a few minutes, it's not spacing. Very yeah, Marcus, that's the point, man. That's the thing, you know. <laughs> that that's the cool thing about this game. It's breakout with all old arcade games. That's where we're going with this. So we did Pong already, right? Then we did Space Invaders. And I think we're going to do Tetris today as well, I hope. Uh, maybe we're going to do Donkey Kong next. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted. 30 times. I, yeah, I'm going to do them by hand, just because. Um, Five. I see how many, uh, and then also we're going to add like an offset, like okay, minus fifty, minus five, zero, twenty-five, and fifty. Let's see if that'll be enough. Okay, but I also have to center that. I'm going to center that later on. I'm going to do like a to do here, to do. Enter this. Well, that's pretty easy. I think I'm going to do that. So the original p, yeah, I'm going to do like p dot x minus equals. Uh, we have the block half size times, you know, uh, which is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Times 11. Sorry, but I still don't understand why I got 50 t-shirts that you don't want when you could get one t-shirt that you really want for the same price. Dude, that's really the wrong analogy. Uh, I don't know. Everyone has a, their own interests, so it's hard to hard to explain if you don't get it. But uh, maybe you should just you know download a game engine like Unity or Unreal and start having fun, man. That's the point. Just start having fun. And maybe you're going to find out that they suit your needs. You know, th this kind of a line of thought that I do have is not common between game developers, even uh, people who who release games. So I'm not going to say that I'm right, but I am going to say that uh, the learn the things I am learning you could not learn by using a tool. That's that's for sure. So yeah, maybe this is a bit too fast. I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit too fast. Let's do like plus 75 times that. So yeah, I think if you download the tool and start playing around with it, you're going to find your own way. And maybe your way is going to be just use tools and be, be better at using tools. And I'm pretty good at Unreal, I can tell you that. I use like, I just, I've been using it for five years, so I can do games really quickly and of high quality there. I mean, as high quality as, as, I, as I was able to do for the release, right? But uh, I want to trade different interests now. And uh, if that's not your thing, that's okay, no problem. Uh, yeah, so I think the speed was nice now. And I'm going to, I'm going to add them again. Yeah, let's do like five guys. And let's do i times 20 for the y. Yeah, let's do. Why, 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 why? Okay. That was not right. Dude, what's wrong with these four loops? I'm gonna step into them just, just to understand them better. Um, invader, yeah. There you have it. So the first invader Let's call it position, uh, let's see, minus 50, 0. That's right, so we should see him at least, right? So I'm not sure why we don't. Like, we 
we really don't. But if we pass zero to this guy, we see one guy. Oh. Oh no, I, I sorry, I thought I didn't I wasn't doing like a three two. So I have no idea why this is wrong. But I don't really want to think about it at this point. Because I don't know. We're probably going to do like a better thing later on. So I'm just going to copy and paste like four times. And then we do like minus 25, minus 50. And uh, yeah. Maybe three rows. Let's see. Yeah, so the problem is we're using the position wrong, I suppose. That's really. Oh, I think we have, yeah. No, it's actually because we have a, a limit on the block size, not uh, the block count. Yeah, see, uh, five guys are okay. If I do, like, start doing more of them, like if I do, like, two more, we're going to run out of blocks, then we're going to start to reuse the blocks. See? Hmm. So, so, yeah, I can really go back now. And, uh, yeah, like this. Then we can do like blocks and add like a lot more blocks. We already have 256 blocks? How many blocks does an invader take? Um, let's see, next block, uh, what is it called again? None blocks. So zero, and when we finish the first invader, uh, when we finish the first invader here, 46. So yeah, we're going to need a lot more blocks. Let's do... Let's do these, yeah, thousand blocks. Okay. Yeah, starting to look better. I think I'm gonna do like just three rolls of them. Three rolls. Okay. And I think, yeah, that's really perfect actually. Right. So let's start moving them, right? Okay, finally. We took a long time to, to, to make them draw, but they look good. Marcus could just have that surprise moment when he re rejoined the stream. <laughs> that was cool. Okay, so we have the Pong simulation, right? Which is this. Now we're going to do... Uh, we're going to do the Space Invaders one. So, 06 Invaders. And then uh, I'm going to create the invaders state. And uh, we're going to have the enemy P. Yeah, it's going to be the same thing. So state. But we're not going to have the DP. We are going to have a timer though. Yeah. A timer and uh, let's say a count. Let's just say a movement timer and a movement count. Okay. Yeah, that looks right. So, uh, let's do now the simulation for the Space Invaders game. All right. We're going to get the level I don't, yeah, level, state, uh, invaders. Invader. Um, level, invader state, invader. I should really call invaders, I think. Yeah, 
Okay, so we have it, and we're going to uh, just decrease the movement T, or increase it. Yeah, let's increase the movement T invaders with an A, right? Invaders. And we're going to increase that by the DT. And uh, if, and let's also do a uh, movement target, right? And then when we start the game mode, invaders. We're going to set, uh, yeah. We're going to set the game when I need to programming with Python. I I didn't understand what you mean, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I didn't say the first message. This is the first video I'm watching. Why you're programming on two IDs for a code in Visual Studio? The for a coder project looks nice, like Vim. Do you recommend I use Vim to program with Python when I'm programming with Python? Yeah, uh, I use two because the for coder is not a debugger, so I, I can only type here. You know, I can also run the, comp the compiler. So if I press Alt M, I run this uh, this build file here. It actually invokes Visual Studio, and then it shows me the errors, right? So this is pretty much like which could almost say it's an IDE because it compiles, but it doesn't have a debugger, right? Uh, Visual Studio, however, does have a debugger. So I can, I can you know, play the game from here, and then when I hit that particular point, I can, uh, you know, see, you know, the variables and analyze the game and whatever. The reason I don't edit in Visual Studio, because I like for coder way better than Visual Studio as a text editor. So, yeah, I use these two. The, these two ways of, of uh, programming. So I, I don't actually change the code here, I just change it here. And I run the game here because I can like pause and analyze the variables and stuff. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if you recommend, if I, if I would recommend for coder instead of Vim. It's a lot of a personal preference thing. I really like for coder. I think, you know, it's auto indent thing, see? If I start typing with a parentheses, then if I do like a, a curly brace here, it also indents things really quickly. And it's like a ghost indent, so I don't have to like, if I press space, nothing happens. I'm pressing space right now, and it doesn't indent, because indentation is virtual. And uh, it's, I really like it. Uh, it's for free, you can download it on each.io, the free version of it. There's also a paid version, which is like $10 or $12 that you can like customize. Yeah, so there's a $12 version, but you can also download the free version here. And I use the free version, dude, and it's like perfect. I really like it. Yeah, I'm not sure if, if I would recommend you switch though, because you should program in whatever you are more comfortable with, right? But if you want to give it a try, it's for free, man. Just, I really like it. Yeah, uh, so we add the movement DT. If the invader's movement T is greater to or equal than, uh, greater greater than or equal to <laughs> evaders a movement uh, target. I'm, not, I'm going to decrease that by the movement target. And I actually, I didn't think I set the, the default, All right? Let's see, evaders, yeah, I didn't. I was going to do like a level state that invaders dot um, movement target yeah equals to one let's say every second uh, every second I'm going to do what I'm going to just change the position so invaders and we should also know which side we're doing it but for now let's do one step at a time invaders uh, uh, enemy p MAP dot x plus equals, let's say we go 10 units at a time. Level invaders state, yes. Invaders state, uninitialized, yeah. Level state dot invaders, yeah, just like that, okay. Oops. 
Okay, let's go back. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say about that. That is wrong in so many levels. First of all, actually maybe just maybe just like one level. <laughs> but why did that move that fast? That makes no sense. We have the same problem. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't know. Let's, let's put a breakpoint there, but... Come on, man. Let's put a breakpoint when we do hit that. So... If it's greater than target... The target is zero? I thought I had just initialized that. Oh, I initialized that. How is that not a compiler error to put an expression here? This is like between the cases. Oh, because I guess te technically you can do that, right? You don't need that. Yeah. That was a stupid mistake. So we're doing that every frame. Now let's do this every one second. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now this is threatening. <laughs> I can feel the threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and let's also change the the enemy P X to be minus twenty-five in the beginning. Yes. Dude, this is awesome. See? That's really, really cool. Okay, now, uh, instead of doing a count, movement count, we're going to do like movement direction, or like a is moving right, yeah. And the default thing, target, Oh, I name it. Oh, I misspelled target. Uh, target. Okay. And I'm going to set the, the is moving right to true. Okay. And then I should also, you know, change the the, the typo target. All right. Well, we're still still gonna hit the wall, right? So, um, simulate level. Okay. So, if invaders is moving right, we should move right and test if we reached the end. So, if uh, this guy dot x is greater than Let's see, if it's greater than 40, oh, actually it's going to be like, we start out at minus 24, when we hit, yeah, I think it's going to be 25, yeah. If it's greater than 25, right now I'm just going to change the direction, uh, it's moving right, later we can do like them go down, which is going to be the, the cool thing. Okay, now all I'm going to do here is the other way around, minus 10, if it's less Minus 25, moving right is false. Okay, let's see what we have. So we should move right. Dude, that was pretty cool, man. Yeah. Uh, that's not working really. Hmm. Why is it not working? Let's see. Let's stop at the moving right part. Okay, this is minus 15. This is minus 5. Oh, because we, we did the other way around. 
this one's false, and we should actually just change the, the value. That sounds that sounds less error prone. Okay. Now they should you know ping pong back and forth in terms of direction. Uh, this is really a hard game. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. So far, you only have like one shot. You have one life, right? So it is pretty hard. But when we add like three lives for the player, maybe it won't be that hard. Yeah, 25 was too much. Yeah, we should do like... Uh, we're going 10 by 10, so we should do like 15. I mean, it starts out like this, right, Eric? That's the that, that's the normal first level. Okay, so you start out, you play around the breakout, you know, and then you do like this level, and then you have more complicated stuff like, okay, maybe there'll be power ups, right? And then, uh, well, let me get a power up here. It's not random, but by the way, guys, we didn't implement random yet. Uh, well, it's actually meant okay, so. We got a power up, which you you know will make, yeah, like this. Then implement another power up, which is going to you know shoot more balls, things like that. This one's pretty hard, but this one, I know I don't know if you're gonna keep that, or if you're just going to improve on that at the very least. Which you have two balls and you have to hit, but I think that's cool. I don't know, that, that's pretty interesting. I think. But you have to definitely change the ball speed. This one just a, a crazy idea that uh, uses the other mechanics. And these guys at the top. Yeah. And this one is where it's starting to get interesting. This is Pong. Right? Wow, this is going to be hard. Okay, let's see. Uh, ah, yeah. And now this is Space Invaders. Now this may be hard. Especially because we're going to increase their speed, right? With time. Yeah, see. Um, I didn't actually see if that was the right... Okay, so that was the right position. So we're going to make them go down, but only slightly. So, instead of just moving the direction, we're going to do like a... a move down. <laughs> That's great, I love it. <laughs> thanks, man. Clone style, thanks. <laughs> and uh, you can actually, you'll be able to download the game and the source code for free on each I.O. So right now, the game that I put, which is last streams uh, executable, it's not very interesting. But this one's going to be pretty cool. You know, there's also going to be levels and, and stuff. And you can also download the source code if you've been watching the stream on YouTube. You can watch like the whole thing. We started out with like a blank file and did everything on uh, everything from from scratch on stream. You can watch the whole thing, and then with the source code, you can play around and maybe add your own levels and game modes and who knows. That's pretty cool. Okay, so move down, and we're also going to set the move down to true, right? Okay, and I, I think this should really be like yeah, move down. Okay, and if we are supposed to move down, oh, I'm sorry, this move down is really here, yeah. Um, like this. Okay, so if we are supposed to move down, right, uh, what we're gonna do is just uh, move down. Let's do like, I don't know, three units or two and a half units ever so slightly. Uh, cool, I'm a first time watcher and I'll sub to your YouTube channel. What are you using for rendering? OpenGL? Right now, we wrote the renderer from scratch. That was the first day. So in the first day, which you can watch like, like here, uh, the YouTube's like Dan's a Dan. Yeah, in the first day, we, we wrote the platform layer. So we opened like the Windows window and things like that. And then we did the rendering with no libraries whatsoever. So we did everything from scratch. Uh, and this is pretty cool. The render is uh, it's pretty nice. It's actually pixel independent. So you can do like a very small screen. You can do super wide screen, super tall screen. 
and uh, you'll be able to see the whole thing. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. And you can even play on full screen. And uh, the performance is, is very nice because we're not like we don't have bitmaps yet and rotated stuff. We're going to add like more stuff to the render later on. But yeah, dude, no layers. We may in the polish pass do an OpenGL version. I'm not promising. Just because I don't really like OpenGL. <laughs> and this is a simple game, we don't need it. So yeah, that's kind of what I've been working on for a long time now. Well, it's a library from scratch for me. Dude, that's great. I mean, having your own libraries, uh, not only is it a great way to learn, and also uh, really fun, you can really, uh, can really be useful because it's going to be more and more complex. Dude, that's, that's great. Everything from the allocator to the list, search trees. Yeah, well, th that's the idea of this stream. This stream, we started out with nothing, and we're going to do this game. And when we finish this game, we're going to publish that on HIO, the final version. And I hope it's going to be pretty cool, right? And then we're going to improve on that engine. So we're going to add OpenGL support and animation and, I don't know, crazy stuff. We are going to add uh, audio, threading, and maybe bitmaps for this game. And this is going to be more and more complex. Currently, I'm working on my own scripting language uh, to use my own game libraries. Dude, that's really cool. I did uh, a language, like I played around with it for a while, and uh, it's it's great because you learn like so much about data structures that I had no idea in terms of like the the you know the tree stuff and going down the tree and changing the nodes things like that. That was a great learning exercise, and it's also a lot of fun because you can really get the the way I I, I learned. I structured the learning process was I was supposed to do like a calculator where I would type an expression and then I would parse that expression and solve that and give the result and that wasn't too hard so after that I started doing like variables and things like that and the language compiled to C uh, honestly I had the most fun writing compilers yeah they are a lot of fun and honestly I started doing that because I was super inspired by Jonathan's blow uh, Jonathan Blows uh, J. I don't know if you know that, but Jonathan Blows is like a big shot in the, the the indie game community, right? He's like an awesome programmer, and he also does he also does live streams from time to time, and he's been doing a, a, a programming language for like four years now. It's gonna be almost five years, and he has like a full playlist, yeah, compiler programming live streams. So he has like seventy live streams of compiling programmer and like 55 of like uh, demos. And if you watch the very first demo, uh, the very first on top, he's so excited. Yeah, I've been watching him for, yeah, dude. Uh, he's so excited about doing the programming language that you can't help it, but you want to do one yourself. So that's what I did. It, turned, it, it was just, you know, I didn't actually finish it or anything. It was just like a, a learning thing, but uh, it was great. And the excitement was, you know, I don't know, when, when you watch someone exciting do, do something that he loves, like Jonathan Blow and things like that, the energy really passes through. That's one thing I want to do here. I want to really show you guys how cool is it to make games from scratch and uh, the learning process too. I recommend Big Squid uh, channel on YouTube. That's a nice recommendation, man. Uh, I'm going to show it here for the people later on YouTube. Dudu from Rio de Janeiro is recommending BitSquid. I would also recommend Bitwise. I don't know if you guys know. Uh, and made Bitwise. Bitwise is great. That's where I actually learn to program compilers. Uh, it's a little bit tough if you're not like familiar with programming. But if you go to like bitwise.handmade.network, there's like a ton of episodes. And uh, the main thing about about the compilers is like. It's like this, the first like first ten episodes, or like twelve. Yeah, so that was great. Bitsquid's another great channel. Yeah, you made me go back into a few years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, these kind of projects, the ones that you know you're just doing it because you're interested and want to learn more, is the ones that usually you learn the most and have the most fun. And you take when you, when you go like when you remember the projects that you did, that you did, those are the ones that uh. You, you learn the most, like in terms of data structures and things that you really were excited about. Can talk, but yeah, I mean, BitSquid is great, lots of cool stuff. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so I don't remember what. Oh, yeah, we did the move down. So let's see if we're going to move down whenever 
we yeah we did but we also moved yeah okay so that was totally wrong honestly so but we didn't finish so uh, the move down we're going to set that to false and this is going to be an else right okay. see how fast that was in terms of code editing that's what for coder says you know in the in the annual statement if you can call that it says we're going to make like a not a text editor but a code editor see how fast that was to change that piece of code okay so that's pretty cool I think I'm not sure what we're gonna do when we when they reach you maybe maybe if you collide with the block that'll be game over or maybe if we can just hard code a position I'm gonna do that just hard code a position and if we reach like a certain position it's game over I haven't still tried for a coder even though I see everyone using it I know if I came up with it. yeah the thing about text editors is uh you have to use the one you're most comfortable with right I was lucky enough not to be comfortable with anyone or any text editor before I, I use for a coder but if I if I actually was using like Vim for a long time and was really used to it and really liked it there's no point in switching really unless you don't like it unless you use it better like oh maybe I'll try a better one and things like that or a different one and I'll see if I like it yeah so there's that so I don't know but I really like it still baffles me how I learned Vim yeah <laughs> that's the thing I was like oh man can I do like a, a <laughs> an easier step to, to write code fast and I think I write pretty fast. Not the fastest, but fast enough, I think. Okay, so this is pretty cool. I think this is really, really hard, I suppose. Uh, really, yeah, someone said that that's hard. Now I'm starting to think this is pretty hard because there's a lot of guys, right? If I drop like a random power up, that may start getting easier on you. So, I think I'm going to do that. I'm not into customizing my editor, so I just use Sublime. Uh, yeah, you know what? The thing about customizing the editors, I really don't like it either. I think it's a really pain in the butt. For Coder has a whole open customization layer that you write on C++ or C, I don't remember. That you can do like whatever you want. You can turn that into any kind of editor, right? You can do like a moto editor. You can do whatever you want, pretty much. Everything from simple things like changing the, uh, the key bindings to more complex stuff, but I just use the default version because, I don't know, I don't like to spend time on that stuff, tools. Yeah, so this is impossible. <laughs> if truth be told, you can't win this game, right? Adam is nice too. Yeah, a lot of people say, say, say a ni uh, nice thing about, about Adam, but I haven't tried it myself. Okay, so at this point, we should have died, right? But we could have win, actually, so not sure. Maybe if you just add a ton of power-ups, that will be solved. Let's add random to our engine. So, we could add, ju just a disclaimer, so you guys don't be like all crazy on me. We could add, just use the, the, you know, the add rand, like that, like the random, the rand in C. We could use that pretty much like this. We set the seed and then we do the rand. But in order to learn, we're going to implement our own random our random stuff. Let's do a counter. Let's see how much time it takes for us to, to, to write that. We're going to do a XOR shift algorithm, right? For number generator. And the idea is super simple, man. We have like this state, which is like an integer, right? And whenever you want a random integer, we just do this. That's really it. Yeah, that's the thing, man. When I start studying that, what it actually takes, it's really simple. I mean, of course, you can do like way better and do like SIMD and uh, more random distribution and do like a truer random algorithm, things like that, or more random than this random. But it's great just to know what actually goes on inside the, the random algorithm function. So this algorithm is a very simple one that we can just 
start using it, really. It's really easy. So, uh, we have the math.c, so we're going to do like a random, and we're going to do like next random. And we are going to have like a global C for now. Uh, or maybe we should just call like random U32. Yeah, random U32. It's going to be an inline U32. And the state is going to be global for now, like random state. And we're going to start with a random seed. Uh, Oh, I still haven't my, done my own printf function yet. Doing that one off. Really, that's pretty cool, man, because printf, you can really do like cool stuff with printf in terms of like the types, right? And like 0, 2, D. That's pretty cool. And uh, that, that's a, a great learning exercise, I think. Yeah, but I don't know, var args are really weird in C. So, I don't know if I want to do that just, just because of the... I just want to do the floating point stuff. Yeah, the floating point. I don't know. I'm not a, like a expert in floating point stuff, but from what I've played around with, whenever I want to do like a text to floating point or the other way around, I just use the C library because, yeah, that's, that's a little bit more complicated. Well, yeah, depend, depending on the robustness you want. Like, you can do like a very dirty, quick and dirty function. Same, I have a decent understanding. Yeah, you could do like a, a decent thing, but uh, the thing about precision, that's the, the complication. Morpheus, uh, with printf, you also have to think about buffering, right? Uh, what exactly do you mean by buffering? You mean text buffering? I'm not sure. I haven't done it, so I, I, I can't like do can't comment too much, right? Let's do like uh, hmm. result equals random state, and uh, let's change x for uh, a result, and then random state is going to be result. And then we add the return result. So let us see if by just doing that, we have random numbers, right? So we have a start game. Let's just do some crazy th stuff here. Random U32. Let's do like 10 or so. Okay, and the math behind doing all those shifts, I'm not going to pretend I understand, right? So we are one level deeper in understanding the random. <laughs> we got as far as to understand the code, but not to understand the math. If that's your thing, maybe you can do like you can do like a whole craziness thing about getting the math right. Yeah, reading all these articles. That's not really my thing. Not, uh, isn't the output buffed? Hmm. Yeah, so you, are, you do mean the text output. Well, you don't know the size, so you, you're going to have to allocate one, one, uh, one way or the other, right? I have no clue. I haven't looked into it much for than a few examples. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can pretty much expect to not know the buffer size and have to do like by hand, yeah. The allocation. But I don't know either. If you get, to, uh, when we do like a console for the game or a print helper, we're going to do that, like to print numbers and stuff. We are probably going to use the printf to change like from floating point to text because yeah. <laughs> That's kind of, I don't know, a deep hole. Or not, maybe Clone Style will be able to do his own thing, and then he can live stream showing what he did, then we can implement that on this game. Hmm. Isn't that a cool project, man? 
I'd like to see that. So first number looks random enough. Let's see. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, let's see them all in hex. So second one. Isn't that great? Dude, that, that's pretty random to me. And then we can do all sorts of crazy stuff with these numbers. So yeah. <laughs> Done pretty much, right? <laughs> uh, and of course, we are, we are going to have to change the seed. But we're not going to do that for now. I like to do... Change the seed to uh, be unique per game run. We are going to do that. But for now, all we have to do is now do like helper functions. Like we can do like a uh, random bool. And then we can just like return if the random u32 uh, yeah I think that's gonna be random enough let's let's test let's test let's change u32 to b32 and then let's see if we get random bulls um yeah let's see one one zero 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 one one Pretty easy, man, and pretty cool too. Uh, yeah, so Morpheus gave us a link about uh, the buffering printf in terms of flo floating points. That could be cool. I'm going to save that for later, just a second, so I can learn a little bit more about that. The three types of buffering available. Yeah, so I don't really understand much about it, so I gonna kind of have to. Linux programming manual, yeah. Yeah, that could be cool to understand. Oh, it has nothing to do with printf. But it has to do with floating point though, no? No? So I kind of lost it, This the, the, the line of thought, you guys, in the chat, I kind of lost it. <laughs> it's okay. Let's just finish what we're doing in terms of uh, the power-ups. So, oh, we should also do like random in range. Like, uh, Random int in range. We pass the min and the max. Then we do like inclusive. Yeah, okay. We should also do like random choice. That's a, a nice one. That's basically this. That's basically a random bool, but you can change this parameter here. But yeah. So the int ram, random int in range. So we have this number goes from zero all the way to you know this. So all we have to do. Well, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna go that rabbit hole now. I think I'm just going to do like the random choice. Hmm. Chance. Which is like this. Yeah, we can do like more random stuff later, but for now. If you open a normal fire. It's a block buffer, it means the content gets on the the fire when the buffer is full. Yeah, I suppose you mean you mean like in the normal in the Linux library. I think that was the, the, what the link was about. Yeah, not sure though. Um, okay, now when we initiate the invaders, but streams for SDD on SDR are, are line buffered, so they get output when a new line is detected. Okay. Yeah, when I played around with that, you know, getting like Windows pipes to get the standard out and standard error things, I had the hardest time because I found that was a like a huge mess. 
right? Invader. So I end up not going too deep in understanding that because I wanted to like filter some some sorts of uh, output of the program. I don't entirely remember. All I remember that was really crazy. <laughs> okay, so if random choice, let's say if there's a, a there's a chance in five. If there's a chance in five of doing this, we are going to set the block. The block. Um, Okay, it's an implementation of libc to reduce the rights and calls. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, now I got it. Yeah, I got the context. Power block. Hmm. See, now we should we should really do the random things. Uh, now, because I have to think math a little bit more messed up. So, uh, power. Yeah, I'm gonna do the random int in range. To be uh, one, all the way to power count minus one. Okay, now let's program that. I think gonna, you guys are gonna have to, have to help me help me because this is the kind of code that I usually get wrong all the time. We <laughs> usually all the time is good, right? <laughs> Random int in range takes a min, takes a max. They're gonna be included. What is the random 32? The random U32 returns a random unsigned integer of 32 bits. So this one's our actual random. It returns everything from zero to uh, this number, right? So this is what we can use for random. So we have to use that. And we, we also we also use that to do like the random bool and random bool with chance equals zero. Should be the right code. Yeah, inclusive. And then we should do the random intermediate. What do you mean what? That's what we did for the past like five minutes. We we came here to P and got a random algorithm. That's the X or shift algorithm. <laughs> because I said, okay, we could use the, the the CRT implementation of random, but that wasn't fun enough. We wanted to know what kind of code do we have to do to generate a number algorithm, right? So we got this one, which is pretty simple. All you have to do is start with the seed, right? Right now, we are hard, hard coding this seed, and then we can change that later on. Yeah, and then it shifts by these, these prime numbers here. And uh, I don't understand the math around it, so I can't actually explain why it works the way it does. See, but... Uh, yeah, you can probably read all sorts of stuff about it, about it, right? And people built algorithms on top of that to be more random, but this is random enough, I think. <laughs> yeah, so this is our random algorithm. So we got this guy returns from zero to max int at max u32. Such hacky stuff. It's not hacky, dude. That's like math. <laughs> math. <laughs> <laughs> but I also like it. I like this kind of weird stuff to, pre uh, to get uh, interesting results. And we tested it, and it was great. It worked pretty much randomly, I think. But now we have to change this number, which goes from zero to this guy, to be uh, our number. So we have a range, right? And the range is max minus min. So we're going to do int result equals random u32 modulo range, right? Think that's right and then we're going to do result plus equals min return result you know I'm not sure this is correct um, left operand has type okay so we have to call that function not sure this is entirely correct but let's play around with it a bit so here in the invader, let's do some tests. Okay, so we ha uh, we already test the random, but let's test the random choice. Let's like a random choice. Um, let's do like four. 
So it should only be true for like uh, every four times privately. And then let's do the random int in range. Random int in range. Let's do like 0, 10. Let's do a few 0, 10s. Then let's do like a minus one, one. Yeah, that should be enough to test. Nine, ten. Isn't max mean possible? Exactly. See, I, I always said I got, I got this wrong all the time. So max minus min plus one. You are correct. We, are, we were going to exclude the max. Nice call, Morpheus. So uh, when we do the create invader, let's see all these guys. So yeah, I think that was correct. We got one out of six out of seven, which sounds about one in four, right? Okay, now let's test the, the random int in range. So we had, let's change back to decimal. We had 5, 1, 8, 5, 8, 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 1. That looks perfect to me. What do you guys think? Now let's start using these numbers, right? Because we wrote that to use it. Okay, so you already have this system. So every five blocks, one's going to respond a random power up. It may be a power up or a power down, as we were calling it. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Okay, this is chaotic. Dude, if we thought it was hard before, <laughs> now it's like super hard. I don't think I'm gonna spa spawn power downs. <laughs> like, do we have like the last? Yeah, we have power up last. We're going to do like, just the power ups. <laughs> because wow, that was crazy. Maybe we should do like. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, got three. Yes, yeah, so it's gonna be a power up festival. Yeah. We have to fix them. I think we're gonna do that, that next stream. We're going to fix the, the, all the problems with the, uh, the power-ups, like the comment was problematic. See, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. It doesn't. And, uh, well, but <laughs> now I've got way too many power-ups. And, uh, yeah, now it's like way too easy, but it's not interesting enough. Maybe I'm going to add like fewer invaders. What are those invaders? Some kind of easter egg? No, man, the game is going to be like... The game is breakout applied to different games. <laughs> That's the game idea. See, so we start out with normal breakout, and then we do like a little bit of breakout fun, you know? So we test, you know, breakout, you know, in different uh, with power-ups, things like that. And then we do this game mode, which is pretty bad so far, but it's going to be good, I think. In the end, which is like two balls, you have to you know each ball can only destroy it, can only destroy the opposite color or the same color. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is chaotic for now, and then we do pong, right? So this is our version of pong, applied in the. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> applied in a. In breakout, so this is Pong. The collision is not a hundred percent accurate. I have to change that later on. Okay, so yeah, so we got Pong. Oh, we almost got the Heine here. And yeah, Pong. I think Pong got a pretty, pretty nice, you know, uh, pretty nice average of difficulty and interestingness. And then Space Invaders. Right now, it's really hard 
maybe maybe if I if I uh, maybe one ball should be able to destroy more than one block. Like if you make them super small, do you make some power ups like plus speed and plus size the ball? Yeah, we do have power ups, but uh, for now we only implemented like invincibility. Implemented one that's kind of buggy. I call it Comet. That one's supposed to go through the the enemies. Let's see. In this game mode is easier to see. It's supposed to go through the blocks. That's pretty cool. So that in uh in the context of uh see that was pretty cool, right? But it's not a hundred percent yet. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of glitchy. And we have like triple balls. See, that was pretty cool as well. Like, yeah, we could do like plus size of ball. That's a good idea. So, power ups. Let's do like power up. Uh, maybe we should do something like this. Like power um, increase ball size. And the thing is, we got it wrong. The triple shot is the last, the power up last. So we don't need to subtract one. What's the trigger? Uh, right now, each block gets assigned whether or not it gets a power up. So when we start the, the, the level, like this level, there's no power up, right? It's supposed to be like good old breakout. This level, since we didn't have random when we did it, uh, we kind of made, for every six blocks in the first two and the last two rows, they're going to be spawning power-ups. I can, I can cheat because I have like invisibility here and super fast speed here, just to see, see? We can uh, cheat and do like a, yeah, start destroying the wall like this. Okay, and then the ball should, should be back here sometime. Yeah, okay. And, uh... So if we destroy like the guys on top, they should give like power downs, and they have like insta death and uh, uh, strong blocks, and they have things like that. See, the, the red ones we sh we don't want to to hit like, and the power ups we have. But see, that was a glitch. The balls weren't supposed to, to go back; they're supposed to just hit the enemies and, and be destroyed. So we do we do have some debugging time ahead of us. Yes, the the yellow, the the yellow blocks are the power ups, and the red blocks are the non friendly power ups or the power downs, as we were calling them. So yeah, that kind of introduces the idea. But we also want to do like a bitmap here later on, right? That introduces the idea, and this is the other mechanic we implemented last time, which was the uh, two balls, and each ball only destroys that kind of a uh, block. This is like really bad for now, but I think we can improve on that a little bit. Okay, yeah, this is pretty much the same thing, just level variation. This is what we did today: the pong and the space invaders. Uh, but I wanna, I wanna play around with that because this is really chaotic. This is not interesting at all. Like, but uh, if we get the invaders really small. If we manage to hit like destroy more blocks with one ball, that could be cool. I think that's what I'm going to aim for. Like, if we hit the invader, see how we only destroy one block? Maybe we should destroy more than one block at this point. Um yeah. We are only destroying one block. Let's do the do. Do ball block collision. We are only destroying one block because when we do collide, um, let's see, we change the ball desired P. Right? So what happens is, let's say we are here and uh, we go like here and then we hit, and then we hit like there are a lot of blocks like this. Whichever first block we say that we hit, 
that's going to change my position, my desired position to be like this. So, well, just bury it like this. Yeah. So the, the other ones are not going to collide. What we should do really is have like a ball desired P and they, or maybe this is going to be too hacky. I'm thinking about having a ball desired P and a ball collision test P. Uh, maybe. Mm, let's see, collision test. And then we are going to test with a collision test P, right? Um, collision test P. Some of them are going to be the desired P, so desired P, DP, K, K, ball, desired P. I don't think this is a hack anymore. <laughs> Changed my mind about it. And the collision P, collision test P. Same thing down here. And this is a hack that we're going to change next time. It's not even working properly. Uh, collision test P. Yeah, we should probably not duplicate this guy like a hundred times like we're doing. We're going to clean this up. We're not player desired P, ball desired P. Okay. For each ball, we're going to set the desired P. Um, yeah, and then we're going to do like the ball collision test P equals the ball desired P. We're going to render the ball. Okay, that looks good. We should probably change these to collision. Yeah. I'm not going to do that for now. Maybe like. Um, do this earlier. But then in the do block, ball block collision test, we are going to set. Let me open this. Like this. Oh, yeah, more room. The, we're going to, yeah, this guy, we're going to change the actual ball desired P. Okay, so we are going to test against the collision test, but we're going to change the ball desired P. Let's see how much we broke. Let's do like the normal game mode first. Okay, this looks like it's working properly, right? Let's do some crazy stuff. Yeah, let's see if we have a ball there. Why does the ball accelerator get? Yeah, that's a cheat code that I added just so I can quickly, you know, destroy the wall sometimes. So, yeah, that's just a cheat code. <laughs> yeah, I think it's working nicely, though. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of hard to get the ball there. Let's see. Like, uh, yeah, that's accelerated a little bit. Yeah, now let's see the space invaded ones. That's the interesting one that we want to see. Hmm. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I think that worked. I'm not sure if invaders. Yeah, the size. I think put it like to a more reasonable size. Yeah, I don't know how to make this like more winnable, despite the problems with the comet and the other guys. Maybe we should work on that for a bit. Or maybe we should just could make them like really slow. Yeah, we could also do that. Yeah, but it's not interesting enough. I mean, I can do like this shower of <laughs> power ups, right? And, uh. Oops, I click outside the screen. Yeah, I can't do that. Um. We'll, when we will do the threading stuff? Well, let's say it's hard to give an estimate because we're kind of doing gamey designy things here and it's hard to estimate we're going to be satisfied with the gameplay. But after we do like this first pass, which we did Space Invaders, we're almost done. We're going to do Tetris. Maybe we're going to do Tetris next. Space Invaders. And then we're going to fix a little bit of the bugs that we created last stream with the power-ups and uh, things like that. That should be like one more, two more, most. These bugs, things like that. And then we're going to do like a cleanup on the gameplay and a small field patch. That should be another stream. And then we're going to do audio. Uh, OpenGL, I'm not sure about OpenGL. OpenGL is not fun. <laughs> and this game doesn't need it. Recursive chat, so... Maybe we'll do an OpenGL pass, but that'll be at the end. That'll be a polish pass. Because here in the engine improvements pass, we're going to do like audio, which is going to be like really cool, uh, and threading to make the audio motor threaded. That's pretty much on only thing we need threading for. We're going to do rotator racks. Maybe we're going to do bitmaps, particles. Maybe. I, I don't think we need a level editor anymore. We did like the Space Invader level editor, right? <laughs> we did. We did this guy, that counts like a level editor, like a very simple level editor. <laughs> and uh, then we're going to go back in gameplay. This is not sure how much time we're going to spend. Because gameplay is tough to, you know, predict. And then the polish pass. Uh, yeah, see, uh, we're going to do the profiler regressive chat. If the render is really bad, we're going to do an OpenGL pass. So, maybe you can, you can pray for it to be a really bad render. But it's not going to be, because the game is pretty simple. But we are going to do like rotated rectangles and we are going to do like more interesting stuff. So maybe. Uh, yeah, let, let's let's keep changing the, uh, the uh, Is that the target? Movement target. Yeah, like this. Let's do instead of two point uh, instead of ten, let's do two point five. Maybe we can do like a little bit faster instead of uh, let's do like 0.8. What would you do with OpenGL? That's the, that's the thing, man. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty happy in terms of rendering what we have now. So I wouldn't do anything different. Oh, I mean, in terms of implementation, or in terms of gameplay, in terms of like engine stuff, like because in terms of uh, in terms of what we want to do, we don't want to do anything too fancy with this game, you know? Shaders. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave shaders for the next game. I'll do. I'll, I'll promise you that. After this game, we're going to do like a more robust engine. That's going to use OpenGL. 
And uh, all the new OpenGL stuff, like, we're going to new, like, by new I mean not old. So we're going to do, like, vertex buffer objects, vertex arrays, things like that. And then we're going to do shaders. I mean, why would you use it? Yeah, there's no point, Morpheus. That's why I don't want to do this. How are you rendering? It's pretty... It's a cool project. Thanks, man. Uh, right now, if you go to the... No, that's not my playlist. But if you go to youtube.com slash Dan, uh, you can see the four episodes that we did so far. And uh, the first, the very first one, we started out with no code, no, no library, no nothing. And then we do like the platform layer, which is input and uh, the window and the loop. And then we do the software rendering. So we get a buffer of pixels and then we just, you know, run through them and fill them. So we have a, we created this like draw rectangle in pixels, which literally, you know, goes through all the pixels we want to draw and just fill them with a color. That was, that was it. And then we did a, a uh, way to change from, from pixels to world and the other way around. So we have like a pixel independent render. So that was a, that was a fun thing to do. So if you have like a very small screen, it adapts itself to work perfectly. And if you have like a very uh, wide screen, it also works. And a very tall screen as well. So you don't miss anything when you play this game. And you can do like full screen. And this is like the debug build. And it's running pretty smoothly here on a 4K display. So yeah, when we run Optimize, I don't think we want to do OpenGL for this game. We don't want it. I mean, for the next one, I'm going to do it for sure. We're going to do like shaders and we're going to do cool stuff. That would be a cool learning exercise. But first of all, let's do the simple things. I thought we were using that library. I forgot the name in Linux. I'm not sure which library I, uh, you mean, but uh, no libraries, man. That was a pretty simple thing to write. If you watch that episode, you see how quickly we wrote that. No need to review. Uh, we already reviewed. <laughs> it's reviewed. Cleanup only needs to be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. See, so it's like 120 lines for the whole render so far. It's not OpenGL. It's like the GUI thing for bootloader scrub. It's not SDL. Uh, yeah, software rendering is pretty cool. I really like it. I mean, you can really understand the whole thing and uh, the whole. Uh, rotated rects we're going to do that in software rendering so our software render will have to be able to deal with rotated rectangles and that's going to be an interesting challenge because I think I want the ball to visually be sideways and curses that's the library uh, I still don't know it but I will take a look at it later on certainly Okay, now I think it's easier, and I think it can really decrease the, the frequency random choice. It's like one in every, I don't know, 20. I did a Mind Super Gaming and Curses. That's pretty cool. Uh, Mind Super is an interesting design. It's a bit weird. Uh, there was a lecture talking about how it was like a, a postmodern game. In the sense that it it was an activity about uh, it didn't show what it was actually about. It was mostly you know just uh, had to guess what it was about in terms of the minds, which is a pretty weird statement to say. But yeah, <laughs> that was that's weird. Okay, so now this is more manageable. I still think I still think uh, it's gonna be really hard. But, uh, oh, it is getting better. Maybe I should do just like two, two, two rows. Your code looks so clean. <laughs> Thanks. And, uh, it's actually really, I think it's pretty messy at this point because we're creating all these crazy gameplay, uh, ideas. And, uh, once we, we finish with this first pass, which we're almost done, we are going to do a little bit more cleanup. But I think you think it's clean because I don't have like a tons of files and classes and uh, going back and forth. The thing is, what the code wants to do, it does. That's the basic idea. And uh, if you want to do more complex stuff, like we are repeating a lot, like the ball 
like this code that repeats a lot. See, this is pretty much asking to become a function. Then we make a function out of it, and then it becomes cleaner. That was my first bigger C project. I'll definitely take a look, man, on your, uh, your Minesweeper game. I want to do more C stuff now. C is really fun, man. I think C is the most fun language we have so far. I really like it. Uh, there, there are a few drawbacks. I think the biggest one that I would love to see in C was like default arguments. That's the only thing that I, I really wish we were in C. Uh, but besides that, I really enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I was going to remove one row of the space invaders. invaders. Yeah, or maybe we could make a hack. Not sure which one is going to be more interesting though. Yeah, maybe the hack is when we we uh, when we destroy a uh, a guy, its neighbors also die, so it'll be easier to eat through these guys. Hmm, I am kind of inclined to do that, just to experiment with that. So we don't have to destroy like 300,000 blocks to go through this level. But we also have the interesting, you know, invader guy. I think I'm going to do that. In this case, I may actually increase a little bit of the size. Uh, not the movement, the uh, invader half size. Yeah, this guy. You gotta do like 0.8. Yeah, so how am I supposed to do that? So each invader is going to have a, point, a pointer to its neighbors, or maybe an array of indices. Hmm, let me think. Yeah, I think I'm going to... Because I could do like that a number of different ways. I could do like the collision thing without just... Nah, okay, let's do the simplest way first. Then we can clean that up. So, we have blocks. Uh, let's do just four neighbors for now. So we have a top guy. We have a bottom and a left and a right. Okay, let's just do this. Okay, so whenever we create a block, hmm, let's just do that in the, well, let's do that in the block block. Okay, so whenever we spawn the blocks, Okay, maybe that's going to be a little too hard-coded. Let's do like... Uh, get, uh, uh, let's see, check neighbors. Not check neighbors, like... Mm, add neighbors. For this block. And uh, let's see... Um, Yeah, I think I'm gonna cheat that and doing the collision thing. Okay, so the add neighbors what I'm going to do, but the problem is I have to do that at the end because I may not have created all the guys, so I'm going to do like calculate all neighbors. So in the end of start game, let's do the calculate all neighbors. Yeah. 
it's gonna be a little bit messy. Just because the code was clean, it's gonna be a bit weird. So I have this block. I'm going to add because uh, the quickest way to do that just to do like a uh, n squared pass through all the blocks. I think I'm gonna do that. How many blocks? We have like 124 blocks. That'll be like one million, right? One million passes in the beginning of the of the game mode. I know. I'm going to do like. Yeah. Let's do like test block. Okay, so. Oh, in fact, if we find out a block with no life, we can actually just return. Right? Because we add them in order. Yeah. That's going to be better. It's going to be a better n squared problem. Okay, so for every block, I'm going to test their distance. I don't think we have a distance squared, so uh, I'm going to add that. If, let's just say length squared from the block p minus the test block p, oh, and also if the test block equals the block, Right. So for now, I'm just going to do like four neighbors, and I'm yeah, I'm not I'm not going to make a distinction of uh, neighbors. I'm going to sleep. Wish you all a great night. Okay. See you, Morpheus. Thanks for coming, man. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm also wrapping up for for now. Maybe I'll do like 15 more minutes. And then uh, I'll also go to sleep. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so. If the length squared is less than the block half size times 2 Squared. If that's the case, we are going to add as a neighbor. Yeah, I'm also going to do a stupid thing to add as a neighbor. So we're going to do like block, let's call this neighbor, equals block neighbors, right? I'm going to do that by i, so i equals 0, i have an array count, test block neighbors, um, block neighbors, i plus plus, we're going to do block, we can do it like block neighbors, i position is going to be test block. Well, if this guy is not zero, right? Continue. Okay, so that's a very stupid way to let's do a sub v two. That's a very stupid way to calculate the neighbors. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it will work for now. Uh, I, we don't have a half size. It's called block half size. Well, it should be just half size. Let's do like block size will be half size. Okay. 
times the legal first struct. Yeah, I'll have to do a mode P2. Cannot convert. Yeah, that's because we don't have a length square, right? Square? No, the square one. Mm. If it's less than I actually want I actually want like I'll just do like the, the max. This is kinda hacky, but it's not going to be a perfect system and I and don't need it to be a perfect system. But just for us to play around with that idea. Turns out to be a good idea, and I want to change that. You know, then we implement a nicer version of this. Just because it's not nice to lose a lot of time doing things that you don't want to do uh, in the final game. So, I'm going to do like a sub v2. Uh, okay, then I'm going to do inline f32 length squared um, okay and the length squared is just the this guy this guy squared plus this guy squared Now, what we are going to do is, let's say, block uh, destroy. Yeah. When we destroy the block, we are going to go through all its neighbors and try to destroy them. The block destroyed is not actually. Yeah, let's do this hard coded for now. So, uh, for uh, recount block neighbors I plus plus if uh, block neighbors I uh, break, then we're going to if you do block neighbors i we should also add the dis blocks destroyed thing yeah uh, the neighbor uh, active no Oh, life. There we go for life, right? Life equals zero. Test for win condition. Yeah. Okay, now let's see what happens. We wrote a lot of crazy code. Okay, so for some reason that other block got set as a neighbor. So we certainly have a problem with our uh, length thing. Let's see. 4.15 Okay, so we are at the block 0, 0 and the test block is also 0, 0 but it's not us no, it's not us oh, they're relative P, yeah Oh, that's really stupid. Because it's kind of confusing, right? Yeah. Anyways. Not sure this is the best long-term solution for the... for the system. But it'll work for now, relative be okay. Okay. 
that one got deleted. But only that one. Okay. Uh, not a success, but not a failure either. <laughs> yeah, let's see when we collide. So this guy minus 79. Yeah, this guy's right by the side. Right. And then we add this guy to the test block. Oh, we add him four times for some reason. Huh. This you should uh should break. Next time around, yeah, let's see. Okay, I don't know why I didn't get the side neighbors, but yeah, this is correct. This is this is what we expected, but for some reason, it's only getting the top neighbors. Oh, because they are closer, I guess. Yeah, but we are getting the. Uh, the maximum, right? Are we not? If the length squared is less, or should do less than or equal to, yeah, I think that's it. No, that's not particularly it. If less than or equal to the square of the maximum of the sizes, which should be the, the, the x, should also do like plus one. Just to add like a oh yeah, the spacing. We have to add the spacing. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. No, actually, I think we have a problem with this code. Like, um, let's go through. It. Uh, let's we're going through all the neighbors. If there is a neighbor, we just continue, right? Let's try another one. And we find a neighbor, we set it to the test block. When we destroy the block. Let's uh, see. Let's see who's who are the neighbors. Okay, so the neighbors are one guy only. The other three are are empty. So it is a problem with this code, setting the neighbors. Let's do like a huge number, just so we can narrow down the error. Okay, so that works. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is the problem. Let's let's draw that. It usually helps. So we have two points which is the block relative p and a test block relative p. We are setting them, which is this guy, and getting the length squared. Let's say it's 10 the length, the length squared is 100. Um, we are getting the maximum size of the half block. Like, Let's say it's like this, they're like this.
we're getting the maximum, which in this case should be the x. Oh, because no, yeah, it should be the x times two. Yeah, we should really add that safety margin before we square. So let's do like half. Um, just for reference, let me see what the spacing is. Yeah, I'm not sure I like this. It's kind of becoming really hacky. But, uh... Yeah. I don't know, it's just the first version, just for us to check out. So the spacing is 0 0.1. Yeah. Spacing is 0.1, so 0.5 should be more than enough. Yeah, let me debug that one more time. Uh, 4 and 15. Okay, so the relative p. So, yeah, we should really break those variables down. Yeah, let's do like diff. Let's do length equals this guy. And the other one we can do like size. Yeah. Okay, so the diff is minus forty four point four. What is the size? The size is 4, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, anyways, so the size is 4, which is the largest one. We're doing 4 times 2, which is 8. 8.5 times 8.5 72 so if the length squared is less than 72, well it's way less than 72, right? Um. Yeah. Let's put like another. So apparently we found another neighbor whose length is 19. Yeah, they're only finding one neighbor. It would be easier if we could like see... Oh, I think they are in order. Okay. Okay, so the block... P is minus, uh, let's say, 44 and 2. Oh, it's relative P, right? yeah. This guy is minus 44 and 6. So yeah, this one is stacked on top of each other. If I do uh, block plus one, we should have the one that's directly beside it. Okay, we do. So, if we subtract their positions, we should have like a... We should have a minus... Um, 40, 44 plus 35, okay, so, minus 9, minus 9, um, yeah, the length of this guy is going to be squared, it's going to be kind of like this, uh, 
81. Okay, so really it isn't. Okay, so yeah, the math is right, but this guy's wrong. Why? This was 35. Uh, let me just check out the block block code. We got x times. Yeah, we do add a lot of spacing. 2 plus the spacing times 2. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so the spacing is relative to the block size. That's the problem. So if the spacing is 0.1, yeah. This is actually, let's say, 0. 25 times this guy. Yeah. Okay, nothing like understanding your own code, right? Um, no, there's no neighbors. Didn't we make it bigger? Oh, sorry about that. Okay. 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 Now, let's do times 2.25. And I think we are correct now at this point. It should be like 2.2, .2, but the 0 0.5 is just like an error margin. And you know what? I think we are we are also maybe we should do like individually for the x and the y. Or maybe we just don't care, like we do like 2.2. I see if 2.2 gets the other one. But we're not even gonna use on this stage. Uh, that's real. oh because we already Yeah, well, who cares? What I'm interested in is on this guy, right? Yeah, like this. Yeah, see? So this is cool, I think. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Hmm. And maybe the ball is getting too fast, I think. Yeah, the ball is a bit too fast. You see, we couldn't even see the difference. We did like, we didn't actually do a full million tests, but we did a lot of them. Yeah, now it's a little bit more manageable. I'm not sure this is like full winnable yet, though. Actually, we don't lose when they get close to us, but we don't win either. So we have to make it. You, you have to make it lose, like. Hey man, oi, como é que você tá?
Hex happy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna decrease the ball speed for a bit. Maybe decrease the frequency for which they walk for a bit. We were like 0.8, I think. Let's do 1.25. And uh, the invaders. Great invader. Yeah. Here, let's change. Um, Earth ball multiplier. Let's do like 0.2. Uh, you do more than 400 lines of code for this. Well, that's a nice question. I don't know how many lines of code we did, <laughs> but let's find out. I have this program that counts the lines of code. Let's count the lines of code for this game. I think it's more than 400 for sure. Yeah, this file alone is already more than 400. This program in this computer for some reason is really, really slow. Okay, so we have almost 1,000 lines of code. And if we do include blank lines and comments, we have over 1,000 lines of code. Like, we have, we have almost 1,400 lines of code. And we did that, let's see. Well, it's not, it's not that impressive, but it's pretty, pretty cool, I think. While live streaming, that may be impressive. <laughs> Okay, so we did that in these four episodes plus this one. So we have like two, six, eight, um, let's say eight, eleven, twelve, plus three, fifteen hours. So it's an average of a, a well, considering bang lines and comments, it's a little bit less than a hundred lines per hour, which is decent enough. Considering, you know, this is a live stream, free time side project. For how long? Well, dude, you can go to on YouTube. Uh, let me give you the link. This link, I'm throwing that on the chat. And you can watch the whole process. It's been like only 15 hours counting with this live stream. And you saw, you can see the whole process. Ever since this, the, ever since the first line of code, we typed that on first episode. And then we did that for the other episodes as well. So... You can see the whole thing uh, from scratch, so no libraries allowed. Everything you see in the game we wrote and uh, I recorded. So I think that's a little bit more manageable. I think we're going to end for today after we, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of nice. But I do have to make it so that the other game, the other levels don't set the neighbors. So I think I'm going to individually do that inside that switch. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe the ball is a little too slow now for my taste. And this makes me want, want, want to be a programmer, all that work for a simple game. I don't know, man. Uh, 15 hours is not a lot of work, to be honest. So 15 hours to get like from scratch, this breakout clone, this other iteration with power-ups and power-downs. Wow, oh, now breaking the wall is pretty cool, right? Uh, this other weird mechanic that we did the other time. And uh, yeah, this other level, the punk thing. Yeah, not, not sure what to say. 15 hours is not a, it's not a lot of work. Uh, well, if you do want to count the other game that I that I released, the big one I did, we've been talking a lot about this today, right? Uh, this is the big one I did, right? So that's not a, such a simple game, right? It's like 3D and lots of animations and lots of levels and particles and enemies and AI and uh, platforming. Upgrade the character, you know, all sorts of stuff. This game was three and a half years. So if you actually do the math, this game is a lot more, you get a lot more bang for your buck if your buck is time. Right? For 15 hours you got that, and for three and a half years you got that. I mean, I'm kind of kidding, right? But you got the point. Making games and programming is a lot of work. 
But uh, by a lot of work, I mean three and a half years. I don't mean 15 hours. That's not too much. Yeah, three years. It was a long time. But uh, that project, let me send you the, the link. That project was pretty cool. So uh, I think it was definitely worth it. The result. Okay, so I have to do quickly just to finish the live stream because I'm kind of getting tired. <laughs> what I want to do is I'll, uh, let me just see if there's any noticeable performance hit. There isn't. Yeah, this is like perfect. Okay, uh, this makes me appreciate games way more. <laughs> That's nice to hear. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, uh, what I have to do? Okay, the calculate neighbors. Calculate all neighbors. I'm also only going to do that in the invaders. So this. This game, there's no neighbor destroying, right? But this game, there should be. Yeah, we have it. Yeah, I'm going to add the speed back a little bit. So we did like, we did like 1.0. 1.0. Um, no, actually, it was the create invader. Yeah. 0 0.2, let's do 0. Point. I don't remember how much that was. I think it was 0. 0.5, I think. Let's do 0. 0.5. Okay, let's try the game mode. Yeah, I think that's good. Hmm. I should also implement the live system. That's going to be pretty quick and it's going to change the gameplay a lot. I'm very new to programming, only knowing a bit of HTML and Python. Making games is a, is a lot of, is a fun way to learn. So maybe you should do like small games in Python. And uh, if you want to do like JavaScript for web things, that could be fun too. Uh, yeah, because games are, they are fun to make and fun to play, so you get to do them both pretty much at the same time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit better. Let me just see if I can win this. In terms of... Uh, I think I'm going to be invincible, just what I want to try is see if I can actually kill them all in a reasonable amount of time. Not exactly thinking about uh, if it's going to be hard to, to lose or not for this guy, particularly. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, so you can't waste much time here. Maybe the comet should be activated. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be really hard in the end. Did I win? Hmm. So we have bugs. <laughs> so there's three chances we are doing space invaders. Uh, make space invaders lose when they hit the player. And uh, check Space invaders victory condition. Are 2D games easier to make than 3D for scripting? Well, definitely. Uh, 
if you're using no libraries like this, that becomes particularly more complicated to make 3D games. If you use like an engine like Unity or Unreal, it is harder to make 3D games than 2D uh, programming rise, right? I'm not talking about the art. The art is way more difficult. But programming, it is a little bit diff uh, a little bit more difficult because of the math you have to do. But it's not like as difficult as it is when you're not using an engine. When you're not, the math really piles up. When you are, mostly it's gameplay uh, math logic. So it's not that much harder, but it is harder, yeah. But depending on the result, uh, it's worth it, yeah. So I think I'm going to check the victory condition and then do it like this. I think I'm going to tackle these guys today. Check Space Invaders victory condition. Um, yeah, for some reason... Uh, victory? Do we call that victory? No, we don't. Mm, win. Test room condition. Victory. Um, yeah, if I destroy... Oh, okay. I see the problem. I have to see if I have a neighbor and that neighbor is alive. Because, hmm, okay. Uh, that was easy. Because, like, if I have like this and I destroy this guy, it's going to destroy itself and counterpoint, point, destroy its neighbor and counterpoint, point. And then if I destroy this guy, it's going to destroy itself and its neighbor and counterpoint. point. So if we have a, a uh, uh, living neighbor, <laughs> let's destroy him and then counterpoint. point. Okay. I think that solved it. Lose. Let, let's do the lose condition as well. It's going to be easy. So we do the simulate level. And if we go down, we test like if invaders enemy py is less than, I don't know, let's see. What, uh, I have to test that. Yeah. Let's put a breakpoint here, 477. Okay, let's close this. Um, 477. Okay, let's do a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to release the breakpoint for a while. And then when I think it's time, I add the breakpoint back in. Yeah, well, this is probably already a loss condition, but yeah, this guy. When the player, uh, let's see. Yeah, when it's less than minus 20, 29, I suppose. If this guy is less than minus 29, we are going to. How's the game over? Uh, game over done? Game over. Start game. Can I do the start game. Start game current. Yeah. Start game for definition. We don't have that yet. Oh, let's just throw that. Um, yeah, simulate level. Throw that. Simulate block for level. Okay, let's see where we are at if we have a game over condition. And uh, so, Space Invaders. 
sides plated. Okay, we should probably fix that crazy ball bug. But we're not going to play at that speed, so it doesn't even matter. Okay, so in this case I'm going to lose, I suppose. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty hard game mode. Maybe we can... Oh! Oh, I'm not actually. Because I, I don't... Okay. Hmm, I can't test this. I can't test just the the group position. I have to see if there if one guy actually collides with me. So uh okay. So whenever we do this guy, I'm going to do like invaders. Do invader player collision test. Okay, that's nicer thing, I think. Okay. Equals true. Okay, so whenever we change the y position, I'm going to check out here uh, in the invaders if we should do a player collision test stuff. And then for every block, let's see, for block this guy. We simulate each block for the level. Okay, and then we check out the ball. Let's do here. Let's do. Uh, oh, we already have simulate block for level. Okay, so simulate block for level. In case we are invaders, we're going to check out if we are. Uh, if the level state invaders dot. Do invader play collision test. If that's the case, we're going to set that to false because we. Oh, we can't set that to false. We can set it. Uh, set that at the end. Mm, yeah, we're going to have to think about that. But the point is here, what we're going to do is a uh, test if the. Block P and this is the block P point, uh, dot Y. If that is less than the player dot uh, player P dot Y, then it's game over. So simulate game, current game. Oh, not simulate. Game. Start game. Start level. Start game. Yeah. Really should be start level. But Okay, now we have to remove the do play collision test uh, whenever we simulate game, I think. Simulate level, I mean. So, each, every frame, I am going to set that to false. That's kind of redundant, but that's okay, I think. Let's set that to false. If I set that to true, Let's see, simulate level. If I said that to true here, whenever we simulate the block for the level, I'm going to test that. That sounds good. What do you guys think? Let's see. Let's see if we're going to lose. close now. I think it's going to be a pretty interesting game mode. I, I don't think we're going to lose this round. Let's see. Um, actually, we should have. Let's see if we're going to lose next round. Yeah, we did. Okay, so this is kind of right, except um, simulate block. Except I'm going to do um, if the block py minus the block uh, half size y is less than the block py, uh, the player py plus 
the player half size one. That that looks better. Let's test that. All right, this guy. Okay, so in this case, if you if you manage to destroy this first row here, you get more time, which is the point of space invaders, right? So I think that comes across nicely in this game mode. Oh, I think it's gonna be really cool, really. Yeah. See? We may actually win this, this round. We're not actually playing, but yeah. You know what? I don't think I wanna win. I wanna lose. I may actually win just because I want to lose. Maybe we should. Hmm. Hi, man. How are you doing? Uh, not sure what happened there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do like strong blocks. Whenever we start game. Whenever we start the evaders, I'm going to make it like a ridiculous amount. Just a test. So yeah, we can't destroy the invaders. We want to see if we are losing on the correct position. And I think, yeah, it's this guy minus its half size. If it's less than the player, plus its half size. Why? Yeah. So we should lose right about now. Let's see. Um. Yeah, the position is yeah the position is a bit weird. We should go a little bit further to the sides. Yeah, I suppose that's the problem. I think that's why it felt weird the first time. Um. So. In the simulate level, invaders, I'm going to hard code a little bit more space for the guys. Maybe 20. Let's see. Oh, we just check out when we start, right? Because we start pretty perfect. Um, let's see. Enemy P dot x equals 2 minus 25 so that's it I'm fine seeing some old school stuff yeah it's fun both to learn how the guys did it or uh, and have some fun too are you using a graphics library like GTK or are you printing it uh, yeah we're doing everything from scratch so no library okay so that was a weird bug no, no libraries. Uh, if you watch the first live stream here on YouTube, I'm going to throw the link in the chat. The very first one, we are in the fifth. This is the first fifth live stream. So the first one, we uh, did the platform layer and our software renderer. So we literally go pixel by pixel and fill its color. So that's what we did in the first day. That was pretty easy and it's pretty cool. And it runs pretty well too. I mean, if I run the game at 4K, it still uh, works nicely. Okay, now it's not 100% nicely. Okay, this is this is perfect. Uh, yeah, maybe there's a, too much overdraw here, but this one runs smoothly. Yeah. But this is a debug build. So if you want to check out how we did that, you can watch the video, and you can also download the source code. Source code is available on, on HIO for free. You can download like the first day where we write the render or the last day and uh, after we finish the day we're going to post that here as well so um let's just have the well now it worked for some reason did i forget to compile um didn't like how that turned out and it's not centered hmm Oh, I'm dying. Oh, that was kind of stupid. I was pressing the wrong button. Okay. So yeah, 25 is a bit too much. Maybe it's going to be like 22 on the right. On the right. Let's do like 20, 22, and this one's going to be like 20. 
and do some C code on my Raspberry Pi a while ago. That's pretty cool. I haven't I haven't uh, done that before programming a, a Raspberry Pi. I really want to do that at some point. That's it's pretty interesting how you can go all the way down to the hardware spec and uh, do stuff with it. Okay, so so twenty two was way too much. Minus. Yeah, it's weird because this one wasn't that much, but this one was way too much. Yeah, I'm pressing the wrong button, that's why not. It's up and down. Let's see, should do one more. Almost. I think you need a little bit more. Yeah, and a little bit even more on the other side. So this guy, I think you're gonna do like this. And this one should be do like 23. Okay. Let's see. Well, didn't change anything that 0.5. Yeah, this one's perfect now. This one's perfect. This one didn't change much. So we were 25. And I thought, I thought that was too much. I think I thought that was too much. Yeah, it is too much. Hmm. Well, let's do it for now. I like GCC compiler, but doing stuff on Linux is a bit different than Windows applications. Yeah, I know. I don't like Windows at all. I really don't. Windows is a. Uh, I have so much, so many bad stories of using Windows. But it is where most people play games, right? So you have to at least know decently Windows, and uh, it's also where most games run better. So that's why I use. Windows, but I don't really like it at all. Okay. okay, so we fixed the lose condition and the win condition, I think. Oh, let me just remove the strong guy. Uh, strong. That strong hack we did. Uh, not this one. This one. Okay, so let's just play for a while and see if we manage to get anywhere close. So the point is we have to destroy these early guys here. Even though it's easier to destroy the other guys like this. Yeah, see? Yeah. That was a bug, we're gonna fix that next time. So, yeah. Yeah. We should probably change the behavior of that. Be more predictable. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's going to be manageable. You know what? Before testing, I'm going to add the final thing we're going to do today, which is the three life for for the player. So player, player P, player DP, player half size, player life. Okay. So whenever we start the game, start game going to set player life to 3 uh, okay but we are setting we should do like this uh, journal right lose life and do like this guy minus minus if player life Zero. To start game. Uh, current life. Let's just see where it's called, right? So, um, yeah. I have to call that after. Oh, it kind of sucks. Okay. Start game. Oh, wait, we're not getting a compiler error. That sucks. Start game. Oh, let's take the V2. Let's force compiler error. Yeah. Okay, so simulate block. Uh, if, yeah, we're going to do a. This one is lose life. Most of them are going to be lose life. Simulate game. 
if we're not yeah, this one start game. Um, if ball reaches the end of the arena, lose life. Against the kill, lose life. Advanced level, advanced level is start game. Uh, yeah, this one start game. This one is start game. Yeah. I think we're good to go. Start game. Yeah. Okay. Now I think I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a visual feedback that we have more lives. Like in the tiny corner of the screen. Let's do like ball. Um, ball P. Where do we have to draw? Draw rect. Okay. So for every life the player has, for every extra life, so it's going to be like player life of four. I equals player life. Let's say zero. I is less than player life. I plus plus. We're going to draw. We're going to draw at. Let's say. Arena half size x. Minus arena half size x. Plus, let's say, I don't know, point, let's say point plus one. And we're going to do minus, oh, this is plus arena half size y, minus two. I'm not sure this is a good size. Let's just see ball. Yeah, I'm going to hard code the ball size. I think it's two by two. No, one by one. Let's see. Yeah, uh, we should do like plus four and minus four as well. And this is gonna do like plus i. Let's see. Okay, so it's gonna be plus i times two point five and uh, plus three. Okay. Okay, that looks nice. So we lose a life. Ah, uh, what was that? Lose life. Player life's three, now it's two. Still two, right? Oh, because yeah, we do have to reset some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So not the level, not the level state. I am going to zero the balls, the power blocks, but not the blocks, and also the ball. So now should be a, a good time uh, to do what we. We said we were going to do and clean up this ball thing. So uh, lose life. Okay. Yeah. And we can also return at this point. We're going to yeah. So zero the balls, zero the block size. We're going to do like a internal Void a setup or init init ball. Receive a ball. Yeah. Yeah, we should also set the first ball movement to true. This is gonna be per ball, I think, later on. Init ball balls. Same thing here. And uh, whatever we have, balls zero dot, we have ball arrow. 
And I think, well, let me see, start game. Let me see how different this guy is. 50. Yeah, the base speed is different. And the flags are different. So we're going to keep the base speed like this. Flags. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do ball, uh, init ball, balls plus one. Um, very cascaded, but efficient. Hmm. Do you mean all the switch statements? Cascaded, that's, that's what you mean? Uh, yeah, we could do like differently, but I kind of like it the way, uh, the way it's structured in terms of switch statements. Because we search for like things like start game or a uh, simulate ball or a simulate level. And then we do, we know, I mean, if you had like a thousand levels, Maybe that wasn't the best call, <laughs> but, uh, well, so far so good, and, uh, yeah, I don't know if you find that confusing, I think I like it a lot, so, I'm gonna let it through, zero the balls, yeah, let's just see if we have anything else in the lose life that we should use in the, yeah, start game. So advanced level, zero the guys in it ball, set the player P, arena, invincibility. Yeah, I'm also going to do that. I'm going to do like reset power ups. Reset power ups. Also have to reset the blocks destroyed. So eternal void reset power ups. Oh, I should do like power blocks. I should do reset power. Yeah. Reset power. Reset power. And we also have to do the number of blocks destroyed. No, we don't have to do that. Okay, we're pretty much good to go. I think. Let's see. Lose a life. Reset all these guys, reset the power. Okay, let's see. Yep, looks good. Let's lose your life. Uh, I think I, I removed this guy from the. Yeah, have to keep them both. First ball, movement, true. And uh, yeah, let's see like this. Okay, I think I'm also going to make these guys a little bit. Uh, a little bit taller as well, like like 2.5. Getting late, yeah, dude. I'm tired, but I really wanted to finish this thing today. This lab, this live system, pretty much done, and I'm going to finish the stream. I'm also tired. Did a lot of stuff today, so one, two, perfect. It's really late here. We're time. Uh, what? What time is it there, Timmy? Uh, here in Brazil, it's pretty much 11 p.m. So it's late, but not too late. Oh, it's 4 p.m. <laughs> Where do you live? Is it like the, the West Coast in the United States? Or maybe Europe? Netherlands. Wow. Yeah, so I can't complain about getting late. <laughs> so see, this strategy pretty much sucks at this point in the space invaders. Because we have to eliminate these early guys. See? Ugh, yeah. But uh, with the life system, it is it is getting more interesting. So I think we almost have a, a an okay game, except for the bugs, right? Germany. So yeah. I thought I thought at this time I wouldn't get much people from Europe watching, but I guess I was wrong. You guys like to stay late to you know do some game programming and learn a few things and uh, have some fun too. 
experimenting. We did a lot today. Today was great. We did like Pong. Pong was like really fun. <laughs> yeah. We should make that smaller. I think we're gonna do that because it's too easy. Uh, the Pong guy. This guy. Create. Uh, do we pass the size? In the block block. Block block. Number offset offset half size we do. We do the half size X only. So I'm gonna do the half size Y as well. So I'm gonna do uh, V2 block half size. So it's gonna be block half size dot X and uh, block and you can pretty much set block to the block half size. And then two is gonna be the default. See, this is where default parameters would would be nice because we don't want to change all those calls. I mean, uh, why? Why do that? That kind of sucks. And this happens a lot in this kind of programming that I like to do. Just a kind of a just program kind of a, a lot of random stuff and then compress it later on. So things change a lot. Uh, I think this this one right here. So. 242. Yeah, for the next game that we're going to do, like OpenGL and uh, more advanced shader stuff, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use C++. But, uh, but a very limited C++, uh, uh, let's say, features, I should say. But, uh, yeah. Because the more complicated we get, the nicer those features are. But at this point, I like using C. It's yeah, it's faster, it's more, it's cleaner to read too. I think that's really important. Okay, uh, let's okay do that. Mm. Okay, pong now. This two is going to be, I'd say one, one, and then we double these guys. So it's going to be sixteen by four. And I think now it's going to be a lot more interesting. Our pong guy. Let's see, ah, uh, at this size was a bit too much. I think. Oh, it's going to be harder too. Yeah. So not like that small, but definitely smaller. And every one of them drops a a prey hazard too. So I'm gonna, yeah. I think I'm gonna be a little bit larger, like one and a half. Then I'm going to do it was eight by two. I'm gonna do three and twelve. And I was going to do I'll just drop something here. Yeah. And I'm going to do uh Oh yeah, not every guy's going to drop, and not going to be yeah, because now we have we have like the random stuff, have random choice. So let's say every three guys, we are going to create a power block, and the power block, let's see, is going to be power up. Uh, let's see, it's going to be the power up last. It's going to be a random int in range, power up last plus one until the power count minus one. The problem is we haven't actually programmed all of those guys. So some of them are going to do nothing at this point. Unfortunately. Okay, this size is pretty nice at this resolution. We are at a uh, 18 uh, 1280 by 720. Okay. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, having life is a nice way to make the game not extremely punch punchable. Yeah, see I think that that did nothing. 
this one we drop here inside. We should do like a score system later that uh, the more uh, you get like the number of blocks you destroy times the life you have. So the more blocks you destroy with full life, you're going to get more points for that. That could be cool. Let's see if you can win. We should do like a, uh, a better system for these guys later on, but for now. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think it's pretty winnable. Yeah. Okay. Let's drop it in here. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's it. Okay, so let's just redo the to do and then we're going to close everything. Uh, yeah, so now it's, it's probably like 4 o'clock exactly in the morning there in the Netherlands. What time is it in Germany? Is the same 4 o'clock in Germany? Uh, so review if we didn't forget. Yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to finish this guy, finish power downs. But I th uh, and then play around the two ball level. Bugs might happen when collision. These two bugs. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to do like the comet first. Comet stopping in the middle of the run. And debug the weird three ball behavior. Add life, uh, add uh, block life. Yeah, so this is looking good. Maybe we have like, yeah, the same time zone. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we have like two more streams of gameplay stuff before we go back to the engine. So this is the fifth one, I suppose. Yeah. So maybe by maybe seven or eight, um, eight or nine, we're going to do audio and threading. Maybe not in the same one, but we're going to start working on that. Audio, threading, rotator X. Yeah, I'm going to do bit maps probably and particles. Particles are going to be pretty cool. Who doesn't like particles, right? And uh, yeah, but next time I'm going to do some gameplay debugging and uh, polish because uh, I think in terms of content, this is okay for the first gameplay pass. Maybe this one, yeah, I'm going to have to play around with this one a bit and this one, but this one is great. This is the this is the actual the actual idea, right? And this one is also great. This one's <laughs> this one was, that was funny, <laughs> yeah. We should also make them drop like random uh, random uh, hazards, uh, power downs. Yeah, we should do that later on. And also the score system. So yeah, we should probably do like the add print, just the first thing. It's going to be pretty easy. going to be a hacky print for now, but a print nonetheless. Add a print number, and uh, then I can do add score based on uh, it's going to be like for every destroyed block score plus equals life, something like that, and then we can focus on the the, the bugs. Okay, does that sound good? So if you want to download the source code that we wrote today, you can go to the game's itch.io page and just click the download now button. You're welcome to give me a tip if you want, but if you just want to download, it's okay. Just click, take me to the downloads and then you can download the executable and the source code for each episode. And in case you want to see how we built this game from scratch using no libraries, we can go to the YouTube page where, we, where I'm starting all the episodes. So from the very first line of code that we wrote, all the way through the gameplay stuff that we're doing now, like this cool stuff. Everything is documented there and you can uh, watch and play around with it by downloading the source code and understanding. And if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments or the chat, wherever you feel more comfortable, then I'm going to try to answer them. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. That was fun. Yeah. Okay.